Good morning. Thank you, everybody. Oops, sorry, I can hear myself echoing in my ear. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for coming back um, so promptly. And um, we are going to uh, keep with the uh, speaking, electronic speaking system. Um, I mean, I know there have been a few um, kind of hiccups with it, I think, but I think it's still overall very helpful. It does equal the playing field in and between the online participation. I think yesterday part of the complexity was when we start a discussion and there seems to be an emerging consensus and we want to kind of call for that consensus, it's easy for me, for those that are physically in the room, to see whether or not there's support for that or not. And I think one of the things we were struggling with is how do we actually gauge that for the online participants. Um, you know, we kind of fell into a, a mode where Anya or Luis would sort of poll and then feed back. Um, I know that that's still less than ideal, but we're open to suggestions for, for doing that. Again, it, that kind of um, trying to gauge the consensus, you choose to do that when you think there is an emerging consensus rather than continuing through with a long line of speakers simply in order to move the, the work forward. Um, and I also, you know, spent some time with my computer last night, so hopefully it's back up and I now have everything here on my own screen, which will actually make my facilitation easier. Um, we'll, the agenda is still as was approved yesterday at the beginning of the day, so um, the agenda calls for the first hour and a half to continue with um, the workshop selection process. The second hour and a half, and this morning we would move to the main or focus sessions, and then this afternoon, um, assuming we're able to get through those two um, items this morning, we would use for a follow-up from any of the discussions that came up out of the open consultation and specifically any of the um, working groups of the MAG, best practice forums, DCs. Um, for those of you that might just be catching up on email, I did send a note last night and ask the leaders or co-facilitators of those efforts to please indicate um, if they wanted to bring something forward to the MAG, um, a little description of the, the topic and the time so that we can both prioritize and, and work through the time. So if people can pay attention to that in the background, that would be helpful. I'm going to turn to Thomas for a moment, and then we'll make sure everybody has the right set of documents in front of them for the work we're going to do today. Thomas. Yes, thank you, Lynn, and, and good morning, everybody. First of all, uh, I would like to thank you, Lynn, for a very good, doing a very good job in, in chairing this, and also for Chengitai and Eleanor and his team for uh, extremely valuable support. And I also would like to thank you all for having developed a very constructive and cooperative spirit over, over yesterday, um, knowing that <laughs> what we are doing here is not trivial because the rules are not carved in stone. It's still a young process. It is a multi-stakeholder process with different worlds coming together. And this always needs some time for people to, to, to get to know how other people think or work and and uh, I think we're in, we're in a, a good way to to uh, yeah get the job done as as people from uh, the US would would say and and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be part of this and see and, and contribute to to the uh, successful planning um, at, at this meeting um, I will have to leave at noon because I have an urgent uh, meeting with my foreign ministry in Bern that I uh, have to attend. But of course, uh, Jorge Cancio, our very able uh, colleague, will, will uh, continue to be here and, and take over. Um, so you won't even uh, realize the difference apart from the fact that I'm not wearing glasses uh, and <laughs> my <laughs> hair looks slightly different. <laughs> and I took off the tie this morning. Uh, but um, apart from that, uh, there will be no, no, no difference, uh, of course. So um, I'm looking forward to, to uh, yeah, being part of this progress, uh, process and progress. And uh, yes, let's begin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Schneider. <laughs> now, I, I said Monday in the opening <coughs> consultations that we were fortunate to have um, Thomas with here. Um, Switzerland, and Thomas specifically, has been very involved in all the internet governance discussions since the very, very earliest days and have been um, very supportive, welcoming, and facilitating of some of the new ideas here as we actually move through multi-stakeholder concepts, processes, and meetings. So uh, again, I think we're very, very fortunate. 
So the document we're going to work from this morning um, was an updated version was sent out this morning adding a, a workshop um, that had been overlooked that Carolyn had, um, had suggested. The, you should have an Excel document in front sent this morning about 8 o'clock local time. Um, so it's 8 o'clock CET. Uh, there's two tabs in it. One is the government tab that we went through first yesterday, and then the second one is called Wild Cards and Imbalances, um, which are the workshops that the MAG identified as worthy of further review to try and um, address some of the imbalances that the MAG had noted uh, yesterday morning. Uh, Eleanor very um, kindly went through and tried to color code them according to the decisions that we had taken. The one chart that we're going to be using now is the tab that's called wild cards and imbalances and we would start with line six um, proposal number 107 which was ranked 81 and is called out of my hands and I believe is a birds of a feather um, session so the, the process we're using again this morning is to go through those remaining I don't know, roughly 15 or so I think um, proposals. Again, we would determine if we want to definitely accept a proposal, accept it conditionally, um, and in fact, uh, there may well be some that we just feel are not ready or perhaps are merger candidates. So, same process as yesterday. Is there anyone on, we can go back to, um, to that one. So, out of my hands, again, as a bird of a feather, ranked 81. That, um, I'm assuming that was, because of the way it's indicated in the chart, was part of the wild card, right? So a MAG member actually suggested that we should review that um, as a wild card. So if that individual could um, introduce it quickly, and then I will move to the queue. I don't remember who actually suggested we review that. Who? Arnold. Oh, okay. Arnold, I'm told that was a proposal that you had suggested. If you could do a quick introduction, and then I'll, I'll go to the queue. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Lynn, and good morning, all. Um, yes, we, we, we did propose, or I did propose, to, to put uh, this on the wildcard list because um, not only it is ranked very high, it is, has a high score and a low variance. Um, I also indicate that no comments from MAC members were received uh, on, this, uh, on this proposal. And very important is that uh, this is a continuation of a debate which we had uh, in, in last year in Mexico uh, in a workshop on decrypting sextortion. And it was really a lively debate, a uh, full packed room. I was attended uh, at that moment and um, I saw the strong involvement of all participants from all over the world, not only women, um, and they were discussing this, this very sensitive issue. Um, and at the end they came up with conclusions and there was a strong wish in the room to, uh, to continue this debate. And now you have in front of you a, um, a title. I think it's a catchy title, really folk, uh, oriented, uh, focused, uh, and, and, and uh, an emerging issue as well. Um, there were some comments uh, from, from the field that out of my hands uh, should be extended, because what does it really mean? So the uh, proposers suggested now to add this title to this uh, title, the following uh, sentence. So it now fully reads out of my hands, harnessing tech solutions driven and user-centered actions to counter sextortion. So uh, this tries to cover what the, the, the intention is of the proposal to, uh, to uh, debate. Um, because one of the main conclusions of the I IGS 2016 workshop on decrypting sextortion was that if we want to think about minimizing and controlling the impact and scale of online harassment, then we have to um, think about uh, solutions. And uh, the proposers think that um, a way forward could be a, a socio-technical uh, solution. Um, so it will touch upon uh, questions like how the technical advances may assist in what can users victim, victims do to be in control of their digital images. It relates to uh, uh, issues like cyberbullying and revenge porn. And uh, other question, they will explore the different 
technical tools that have been developed around the world to combat sextortion. And the third one is the panel wishes to bring together multi stakeholder organizations working on tech solution driven and user centered actions to counteract. Um, one of the panelists is a, a, a Dutch senator, and uh, next to her very political work, she is also a director of an organization to combat uh, child pornography online. So they are very uh, not only she, but the others, very highly qualified speakers. And uh, I expect, again, a, a, a truly lively debate with hopefully a, a solutions which other countries in the world can also benefit uh, from. And, um, well, looking at, at what we are doing here in the, in the IGF, we try to, to uh, streamline the discussions in such a way that uh, conclusions in, in earlier meetings will be followed up uh, by hopefully uh, another meeting where uh, at the end uh, there could be tangible outputs. And that's why the reason I put uh, this on the wildcard list. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Arnold. Uh, in the queue, I have Jack. Jack, you have the floor. Thanks, Lynn. Um, I'd like to support this proposal because it brings a very innovative um, approach to, the, to this issue that's, <coughs> that's increasingly being brought to the IGF space, which is around addressing online gender-based violence. And I think the innovation really is around looking at this from a technology point of view. And I also heard um, from the previous two days that there was greater interest to also have conversations that, have, that has a focus around, uh, around the impact of technology as well as looking at technology quite specifically. So I think this is sort of um, the innovation that this session brings to the debate. Um, however, I would give one recommendation, which is to increase diversity of um, regional representation in terms of discussions. I think that will also enrich the conversation a lot more. Uh, and I'm also happy to give recommendations around that in terms of people who's working around uh, technology and user-centered responses towards this issue from, for example, Asia Pacific. Thank you, Jack. I have Flavio and Michael in the queue. Uh, just uh, uh, a question to the, if, I don't know if Arnold is able to, to answer this. The session format uh, which is proposed is birds of a feather. But if we read the proposal, in fact, it looks like a debate or a panel. We have speakers. Uh, even identified as panelists. So it does not look, in fact, like a birds of a feather meeting, which uh, should have a very different type of format. It's just a matter if the, 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 the proposal is accepted, it should be, this should be improved and clarify at which is the right uh, format intended. Thank you, Flavio. Uh, that will be noted. Michael, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, having dealt with a complex issue of sextortion just recently back home, where a medical doctor almost committed suicide because of this kind of sextortion which was going online, I think I support this session and it still has room for improvement. Just as the previous speaker said, we can still write back to the proposals of this, so at least they can be able to make it in such a way that it fits not, I would say it fits its description, not making it as beds of the feather, and yet it would be more like a debate. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Salah, you have the floor, and then G, you're in the queue. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Having uh, read the workshop uh, proposal, I noted that uh, the primary internet governance issue was uh, on privacy, and so uh, given the given the limited number of workshop uh, allocation spaces uh, i would um i would suggest that if there were other privacy tags tagged workshops uh, which could be potentially merged with this particular one then that would uh, be, that would be my suggestion other than that i have i have no comment on the content Uh, thank you, Salah. Um, I, just a quick interruption before we move to G. Aida, are you saying there's something? No, I, um, I just wanted to say that my laptop doesn't work, so I just raised my hand, sorry. Okay, thank you. So G, you're in the queue, and then Aida. Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, food, to have food and uh, have sex is, is the major thing in our life, and we should not be shy about that. But um, when we are preparing for the annual meeting, 
we should not to we should not hide highlight too much about the sex and where there are so many cyber crimes and the, many of these crimes are more serious than sex extortion or pornography or child abuse things like that mm, but uh, certainly this is a very important topic and uh, we should give it a place in our annual annual session uh, so i'm considering if we can ask those sex related topics to combine to have a joint session thank you thank you g Aida, you have the floor. Yeah, I just very briefly to say that I'm in support of having this session as a standalone session, and uh, I feel that it really will, we will all really benefit from it explaining on how important both gender uh, privacy as a human right and human rights in general, including how serious the sexual uh, uh, matters online uh, of any kind are, so in my support an invitation for MAG members to join this session in order to understand these issues as well. Sorry. Th thank you, Aida. So I'm hearing from the comments to date support, um, some with some su suggestions for how it might be improved and some to understand whether or not it might be merged with um, workshops of two different topics. Following our logic of yesterday, I think our choice is either to approve it and then go back and, and give the input back to the proposers or to approve it conditionally. I didn't hear anybody speaking out um, against not having the workshop. So if I could go to Arnold and then to Juan. Arnold, you have the floor. Um, thank you, uh, Lynn. Just to add a few words to our proposal, to my proposal. Uh, I've also been confirmed that a speaker from Latin America has been added to the panel, so there is a uh, geographical coverage. But we noted that there were some speakers uh, asking f to uh, have more regions included, and we will look uh, at it. At least I will f follow up to that uh, and, and ask the proposers to, uh, to think about it. Um, one more remark about uh, the word sex. Sex is fine, sex is good, but uh, it, this is uh, something worse. I mean, this is a, uh, an issue uh, which uh, infringe uh, rights of, of, um, of women and uh, children, and this should be uh, tackled, combated, and that's why this, this uh, workshop uh, has been uh, proposed. It is a serious problem. Uh, I can tell you uh, the Netherlands uh, is a hosting service where a lot of child pornography is spreading all over the world and our government is uh, indeed uh, very keen to uh, combat these uh, very serious crimes and uh, that's why uh, well as a small part of it uh, we are proposing this uh, this uh, uh, workshop which as i said is a follow-up to earlier discussions we had in the internet governance forum thank you Thank you, Arnold. Juan, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and good morning to all. Um, personally, I don't have anything against the content of this uh, workshop. I, I understand the importance and all that, but uh, my concerns here are, is a matter of procedure, because here we're trying to, to, to address imbalances, and this is a WGOG, uh workshop, and uh, I don't know how this is going, because the same happened with many of the other 200 that didn't pass the, there are many with very interesting topics and very urgent also as well. But here right now we're trying to, uh, as Flavio said, t taking the little slots that we have left to, to try to cover in balance. And I wonder if here we are doing that, if we are doing solving some imbalance here. So uh, in any case, I, I will have this very conditionally accepted in case that we really have a slot not needed for covering imbalances because what, that is what our priority here, to cover the imbalances. Otherwise, the, 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 the procedure for scoring uh, had its, its course already. Here we are just selecting, you know, just tweaking the system uh, minimally to try to, to address the imbalance. That's my concern. Nothing about the content. It's uh, okay and something like that. 
No, th thank, thank you, Han. I, mean, I think those are those are good comments. Um, some of the imbalances we're we're trying to correct are not only geographic; they were also topical or substance as well. Um, this proposal did come in through the wild card process, of which I have to say I was surprised there were only 10 wild cards that were put forward by 55 MAG members. So I think that was showing excellent restraint, and I'm assuming that the ones that came through really were were uh, special or addressing some need. Um, let me see if I can judge consensus to conditionally accept it. Um, go forward. Um, I'm sure Arnold will take those comments back. I see heads nodding around the room, and I'll just give a second to see if there's any um, uh, question or comment or strong objection from anybody participating online. No. Okay, actually, yes, I, I see lots of support in the um, uh, Adobe Connect room as well. Okay, thank you. The first one of the day is always the most difficult. You're kind of retesting the process. Um, so we're moving on now to uh, workshop 160, um, which is ranked 82, um, which also looks as though it, it was a wild card, which means there's a MAG member that um, suggested it for additional review. Flavio, if you have the floor. Yeah, this is why my proposal to be a wild card. Uh, so this workshop is in fact proposed, is being proposed by OECD and ITU. Uh, uh, its purpose is to explore the new uh, policy and technology approaches to provide universal and meaningful access to underserved areas, mostly rural and remote areas. Uh, if you look at uh, the top 72 uh, proposals we have, there are no workshops at all among them that also deal with access, even less access to underserved areas. Four of the top 72 use the tag access and diversity, but in fact they deal with other issues such as gender, two of them, security and persons with disabilities. So we don't have anything. So this is a very serious imbalance, I think, because access should be a very important issue for the IGF. So this uh, workshop will address how innovative approaches from both the public and private sectors are shaping how we will connect in con the unconnected. And it's also important for us at the MAG, the fact that the workshop builds on the IJF's best practice forum on policy options for connecting and enabling the next billion. So there is a direct relationship to this uh, track. So I think there are many arguments in favor of this uh, proposal. I would certainly have to agree that it was a strong <laughs> proposal, strong, strong pitch. Um, in the queue, uh, we have Carlos. Juan, I think your hand is still up from before. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning to everybody. Uh, I, I don't want to, the, this to, to look like a, a Brazilian conspiracy, but the, specifically this subject is very important for a country like Brazil. We do have a huge problem with access in remote areas. Just We just, like, Two, three weeks ago, launched a, a satellite to try to deal with that. So it's a problem for us. But it, it's not only a problem for a country like Brazil. It's not only a problem f uh, for uh, even developing countries. It's also a problem for developed countries. I've been discussing this uh, in fora such as the G20 or OECD with uh, countries like Canada. And they do have a problem with remote areas. And I think that even the United States have some problems in, in very remote areas. So I think this is, a, this is a, 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 a sort of global problem for big countries or smaller countries or developing countries and developed countries. So I, I really uh, um, couldn't, couldn't support more this, this, this kind of, uh, of topic. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. And while we're still working out the speaking queue, I need to apologize to Ginger because it took some time for mine to refresh, and yet Carlos had put his flag up in the room. If you're actually using the online system, if we can try and refrain from using the flags in the room, that will help me follow the discipline a little more clearly. So I have a Ginger, Pablo, Sheeta, and then here in the room I have Aida and G. So Ginger, you have the floor. Can 
need to, okay, thank you very much. I now put myself in the lag doesn't help either. Thank you very much for um, helping us with online participation. I would like to point out, please, uh, that it's not the same to have an online moderator say there is no objection, strong objection from the floor, as it is to say we have several positive points, particularly on support uh, for Jack and Anja. I think it's important to note that there was strong positive support from online participants. So it, it, it's necessary, particularly in some kinds of questions, note the positive support from online participants, particular case where there was online uh, support that should be noted. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, Ginger. It was a little bit difficult to hear you, but I think the scribes did a good job of, of capturing the text. And um, what I understood Ginger's point to be was that it's, it's not simply enough to say that there's no strong objection, thereby implying they're okay with the workshop going forward, but in fact when there are um, strong positive points supporting, um, those should be no noted as well. Um, so maybe we can, when we look to the, to the remote, uh, when we look to Anya, to say, you could say that there was strong support from three MAG members or something, and we have the Adobe Connect chat record as well if we need to be more specific, but I, I, do, I do think that's important to, to know. Um, it, it certainly flavors, if you will, the overall support in the room. So th thank you, Ginger, for, um, for helping us with that. Um, so in the speaking queue then, I have Pablo. Pablo, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. I fully support this workshop, but I think it's needed to include a telecom operator in this, uh, in this panel. Uh, there is no representative from private sector uh, because the infrastructure is provided by, by operators, actually. Uh, thanks. Thank you, and thank you for being succinct, too. Um, Shita, you have the floor. I support this workshop because it really also relates with the issue of access in Southeast Asia. I would like to uh, add that, if possible, to have more speakers from Asia or Southeast Asia. Thank you. Thank you, Shita. We're now going to Aida and then G, and then we go back to the electronic queue. Uh, just quickly in support of this session because no it's not a Brazilian conspiracy in 2012 when Bosnia and Herzegovina went through a devastating flood if things uh, regarding this subject were a bit um, better the number of casualties human casualties would be hugely different and I also would suggest because I know there will be participants from southeastern Europe who are involved in one way or in another during this horrible period to be in included well they will be in the session I'm sure but maybe as a speakers and this would help bring the regional balance as well thank you thank you Aida let me just say how I'm managing the queue again because there are a few people in the room that aren't using the electronic speaking queue or are not able to use the electronic speaking queue. When their flags go up, I note uh, what the last speaker was in the electronic queue. I make a note, I slide them in, and then I go back to the electronic queue, okay, because there was a little note of exasperation here a moment ago. G, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, this topic is really very important, but uh, this topic has been discussed uh, for many, many years. And I don't know what uh, broadband te here means. It, do the proposals mean, uh, you know, the cable-based technology only, or it also includes uh, mobile technologies? Um, if it's cable only, um, I, I don't think it would be a good idea. Um, because there are many technologies. Uh, my experience in Africa and in China tells me that uh, um, mobile phone, if uh, you have uh, introduced a good competitive environment for telecommunication uh, industry, mobile, mobile technology can solve most of those problems. And it can also, if the, the telecom companies can sacrifice a bit of their, their profits, you can also, you know, combine uh, broadband with uh, TV cables, 
and it can also use the existing power power grid line, you know the, the, you know, the electricity system to transit to broadband, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, signals. So there are lots of technologies and uh, there are lots of uh, also lots of uh, success stories. And uh, the, the, the only problem is not about the policy and technology, it's about determination and it's about uh, profits. Um, so I'm Personally, I'm not interested in in having this this topic. Thank you. Thank you, G. I saw uh, Flavio nodding his head strongly. Yeah, excuse me, Eileen. It's just to 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 was just reading from the proposal that, uh, that the idea is to discuss uh, different technological developments, uh, such as uh, and they just citing here fiber optics, coaxial cable, copper fixed and mobile wireless, satellites, hybrid approaches. So I think that the proposals are open to discuss any type of new technologies that are able to, to serve the underserved areas. Yeah, thank you, Flavio. As we're going through all these workshops, if people could keep their comments specifically to the subject. I mean, it's interesting to get a lot of context, but it also extends the conversations um, fairly significantly. So if we can be fairly succinct. And Juan, you are the next in the queue. Yes, uh, I, I agree with, uh, with G that this, this is a topic that is important, but there have been thousands of reports, very, very good ones. And so if I want to hear this again, I, I will go along the suggestion of Pablo, and uh, I think it was Aida, no? or somebody, that we need to change the speakers. Because sometimes they say, oh, this speaker is from Latin America, but it's a, a functionary that works in Europe. Maybe he was born in Latin America, but that's not been there for 20 years and really don't know the problems in the ground. We have that in many, in many places here. If, if we want to discuss here, I want to have a telecom company that is in the field in a developing country dealing with it, or even in a developed country, because as Carlos said, this is happening also in developed countries. But I want people that really handle the field, not theoreticians. I, I'm a good friend of Robert Pepper, and he's a scientist in all this. But I don't think, yes, I don't think this is the kind, again, for do these things. Because uh, I, I like to read the things that he writes, that he's had written uh, long and, and good uh, things, even in, in when he was in ISOC and all that. And, but, but to have it here, I'd rather have, I, of course, I will lo love to hear his comment, maybe as some sort of, of other thing. But I, I, I think that we need, th that's part of, of our job in MAG. We have to, 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 to see for the freshness and the interesting of this, you know. And as I said yesterday or the day before yesterday, in order for even government uh, po uh, policymakers to listen to what's going on. So I think it's a good topic, but it needs work in the selection of the, of the, of, of the panelists or, or whatever in order to, to have it, because otherwise, why to repeat something that I can read? There are many. The Broadband Commission has uh, there, there's thousands of reports uh, regarding this. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. I'm sure that point was noted. Um, Sala and then Julian. Sala, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I make these comments. Um, I make these comments on the basis on uh, the fact that I haven't submitted any workshop pro proposals. None of the organisations I'm affiliated with have actually uh, submitted any workshop proposals. And so, essentially, if there was one workshop that I would personally consider to be among the top five, this would be one of them. And I'm just, sorry, Chair, I'm just going to put this up. Not sure if you can see it. I can see it. All right. Okay, so that, that's an island in Vanuatu, and I'm not from Vanuatu, but it's Santo. It's the biggest island in Vanuatu. Lewis knows it. And um, in terms of uh, data traffic, like they have like two Mbps, 300 kbps in certain regions, they don't have uh, clear accessibility. And in terms of accessibility challenges uh, in the Pacific, like we've just had a Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum, and accessibility continues to remain a massive issue, a huge issue. And it's not just the Pacific, it's also for Asia Pacific. And um, I would, 
um, also support what Ida mentioned. Like it's not unique to uh, developing countries. It's also something that's that's uh, prevalent even in uh, Europe. Like for instance in France, like you have difficulties uploading uh, videos on Facebook at night, you know, or and that sort of thing because of uh, network neutrality issues. So having said that, uh, in terms of uh, ITU and OECD putting up a proposal, yes, I'm going to narrow it down now. I would suggest that uh, perhaps to, I would support it, but to say that perhaps one of the things we could also encourage them to do is to include the statistics uh, division, like how we can better map uh, penetration rates, so that, and apart from just the technologies, to actually meet the, and also see how we can, uh, and just writing out what Ida mentioned, in terms of um, how we can also call for input uh, from the NRIs, uh, to see like if they have NRIs who have interest in integrating into that particular workshop. Thank you, Chair. Sorry for taking long. Thank you, Sala. Uh, yes, we, we do need to try and be quite concise. I have six speakers in the queue and if everybody takes two to three minutes we'll be another 20 minutes on this workshop alone which obviously won't allow us to get through the day i think we're trying to get to the point in the discussion where we have enough information in front of us to try and judge a, a consensus um i will go to the next in the queue but i'll also remind everybody that this was ranked 82 which is a high ranking um, and Flavio also said in his introductory comments that there were very few sessions on access so i think there's also a uh, no, he's correcting me, no sessions at all on access. And, and I think at this point, I think we're probably at the point of saying yes, um, and I will go to the online queue in a moment, Anya. Um, we're saying yes, that um, Flavio will take the comments that were noted here in the room, bring it back, but that it is definitely accepted. Is there support for that? So there are still seven or eight people in the queue. I'll give people a moment um, to take their names out of the queue if they were simply going to support going forward. If there's a substantive point or a point of disagreement, then please leave your name in the queue and, and I will give you the floor. Accepted or conditionally accepted? Accepted. Accepted without? No, no, no. With, with I said noted with the comments here in the room with respect to the diversity of speakers and conditionally accepted or accepted with conditions. Conditionally accepted means it's not a given that it comes in. How many? We probably have five that are in the accepted maybe. No, 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 no. How many lists? Accepted, conditionally accepted. Only two. And uh, no, <laughs> but yes, and two. Waitlisting, yes. Yeah, waitlisting, yeah. A wait listing. Wait list is this one. No, the, the wait listed was yesterday there was a discussion which said don't really think it meets the criteria. The topic is perhaps oversubscribed. The region is perhaps oversubscribed. But it's an interesting topic, so let's wait list it. And if some other workshops drop out, which sometimes happens, or there's additional room, the secretariat would slot that in. That's the third category. And I think we only have one in that category at the moment. I'm looking to Chengatai to see if yes, there's anything yes. he wants to correct with what I just said. So. I still have quite a long queue. Um, the, the question in front of the room is whether or not we can accept this workshop to go forward conditionally, noting um, the comments that were made in the room with respect to diversity of speakers. So that's what I'd like a quick um, reading on. In the queue, and I have Shagoon, Kenta, Raquel, G, and Arnold. And please keep your points succinct. Thank you. Shagoon, you have the floor. Well, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Well, from the point of view of the developing country, I want to strongly support this uh, workshop because in Nigeria, we have just recently set up a National Council on Broadband. And one of the areas of mandate they are to, to look into is how they can enable you know, rural 
communication uh, access to uh, how they can uh, encourage the rural community to have access to the internet and, as, uh, and at the same time while increasing uh, penetration and I think um, I would want to suggest that in order to uh, improve the diversity of the speaker I would not mind if the Nigerian government can be invited, especially the uh, the chairman uh, that is in charge of the council on, uh, um, I'm talking about the, the National Broadband Council, because this topic is very, very important to us in Nigeria. And uh, I would not subscribe to the fact that uh, we should not continue talking about the broadband. There are always new initiatives emerges ideas and innovations. Even if we have, in spite of the work, what we have now in the satellite uh, innovation and all that, it's essential that we keep on encouraging uh, more discussions on broadband. We need it. And uh, because of that, I will strongly support it. Not conditionally, it should be accepted. Thank you. Thank you, Shagun. Kenta? You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. <coughs> we'll be brief. Uh, uh, accept, uh, you know, exception of this uh, condition. And uh, actually, I have one question to Fabio. Uh, is it possible for you to hold this session as an uh, open forum because deadline has not yet come yet? And uh, according to the you know uh, content of the session, you know proposer and organizer uh, you know are both from international organizations. So, uh, uh, you know, I would uh, I would appreciate if you could you know uh, think about that. Thank you. Yeah, both both OECD and ITO have already proposed other open forums, and as as long as I know, they can have just one open forum. So they could not propose a second open forum on this issue. Chengitai says yes. That's a general rule. Let me go quickly through the queue and then close this down. Um, we're really taking a long time for something that I think has broad support and for which there's not another single workshop in the entire program. Um, so it's not complete yet. The, the uh, submission period is still open. Uh, Raquel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I will be brief. Um, I also strongly support this workshop, uh, but my comment is very uh, specific on uh, including, if possible, uh, the work done by the DC3, the Dynamic Coalition on Community um, Connectivity. They are doing the concrete, they bring the concrete examples of alternative models for community networks, so uh, this should be considered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raquel. G, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Very briefly, I just want to support Sagun that uh, we need a more, uh, a more diversified uh, range of uh, speakers. And um, I, um, for first of all, from a government representative from developing countries, they know more, I, I'm sure they know more about that than those NGO experts in Europe. And the secondly, I think we need to include uh, representatives, private sector stakeholders. For example, Vodafone and Huawei, they have global operation and uh, they are doing this job on a daily basis. And for, if, for example, Huawei was, you know, they are setting up towers, mobile phone towers, together with uh, solo, pa solo panel so that uh, they can, the towers can, you know, can, uh, can be say self-sustained in terms of uh, power supply. They have lots of experiences. And, uh, you know, um, I, I really, I'm really you know, hesitating whether I will support this or not, because these uh, speakers uh, in this propose uh, are all from Europe. And uh, in here in Switzerland and in France, um, subscription for high broadband is so expensive. And I don't think these guys can catch, catch the point. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, just to support this uh, this proposal, taking into account the uh, the remarks made on the, the speakers list and their geographical coverage, uh, we'd like to see uh, uh, a panelist from the uh, the private sector uh, in 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 the panel. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. I have um, Jacques and Julianne in the floor, and then I'm going to call consensus. So Jacques, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I also want to express my support, um, specifically also in the comments around greater diversity and participation. Um, and I would also like to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the process. Um, if we can, as Mag, just to refrain from commenting too much around the content for each of the workshop, because otherwise <coughs> it will really take us too long. Um, so to rather be quite specific about how it responds to current gaps and be quite specific about what recommendations that we're going to make. That's one. And the other is also to refrain from really putting down other regions or stakeholder groups in our comments as we're trying to um, raise our points. Thank you, Jack. Julian? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like also to support this uh, proposal and uh, taking into account uh, uh, previous comments of uh, diversity in, in the panel, but I think it's very important because it has been uh, 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 more than 20 years that rural areas are still unconnected and uh, uh, it's really important to um, uh, link these uh, initiatives, especially also community networks into broadband access that is already available in some parts of the um, uh, uh, urban areas and to connect with these communities. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Julianne. So I, the consensus that I'm seeing or um, hearing, reading, um, is for a conditional acceptance with um, quite a number of strong recommendations with respect to the diversity of speakers. Uh, that would mean it would go in the conditionally accepted list and that those um, items must be addressed. I'm looking around the room and I'm looking to Anya to give any feedback from the online participants. Uh, just to say that Alejandra Ramuspe gives uh, her clear support to the 160 and especially to Flavio remarks. Okay, thank you. And I also want to note Jack's comments too. In the last hour, we have done two proposals. <laughs> we will be here for the rest of the day on the remaining whatever it is. I can't see the bottom of the screen, 12 or so. Um, we want to make sure we deliberate, res deliberate? responsibly and um, just enough. <laughs> Not a lot more than enough, just enough that we can actually judge the consensus. So, I mean, if I could ask people to keep their um, comments short with respect to you support or you don't and with what you would want changed, we don't need um, a lot of the context or background or examples. I think we all have a lot of examples and are steeped enough in most of these topics that we can, we can recall our own examples quite quickly. I also want to take this opportunity to say that at 11.30, I'd like to swap, uh, stop this part of the session for a moment move to the main or focus sessions because we only have Thomas with us for uh, a bit longer this morning. And I think it's appropriate that we hear from um, the host country on their plans for the opening ceremony, um, thematic sessions, high level events, et cetera, before they go. So I would like the support from the room to do that. And hopefully we can get through um, a few more of these between now and, um, and 1130. So if there's support um, for that, then we would move to the next um, workshop proposal, which is, is that the one up there? 129 from the Asia Pacific region. It was ranked 89, it's also a very high ranking. It's called Making Artificial Intelligence Work for Equity and Social Justice. Um, now this is one of the ones um, that the Secretariat and I pulled forward yesterday to address the regional imbalances. And again, we just went through and found the next five highest ranked um, regional proposals. So are there any um, comments on the proposal? It, uh, some of the comments were very relevant and challenging topics. Speakers represent civil society and technical community but lack presence, um, I'm assuming from business community and governments. <laughs> um, and I think that was the topic. Is there anyone who wants to comment or speak for that? Juan, you have the floor. Yes, to follow Jackie's recommendation. Plus, I, I, I'm for it, covering those two 
um, comments, you know, if supplement with somebody from business and somebody from government, with geographical, the, the topic is interesting, it's the new one, and in the title is social justice, everything that has social justice has my vote, so uh, I'm for it. Thank you, Juan. Any other comments? Yes, I, I understood conditionally. Jack, your mic slid. Did you want the floor? No. Um, I think it's a critical topic. Um, I also like that the proposals come from both Latin America and Asia Pacific. Um, I do agree that it does require much more diversity in stakeholders' discussions. Uh, if it can include private sector as well as government, that'll be fantastic. So conditional acceptance. Thank you, Chair. Um, also, conditionally support this important proposal. I think uh, they, they need to uh, add speakers from labor union because in, on the new technological conditions, more and more people would lose job. They will be rendered useless in the new century. So uh, people to be em employed or would be unemployed is very important. Thank you. Thank you, G. Uh, I, in the queue, I have Pablo and Renata. Pablo, you have the floor. Uh, I propose to merge this workshop with the number tw uh, 12, actually, that we approved yesterday, because it's very... S sorry, sorry. I propose to merge this workshop with number 12, that we reviewed yesterday because the, it's, it's very similar, actually. Can you just call out the title of 12? That was probably a government proposal, I'm guessing. That's it. It's uh, social responsibility oh, oh, and it's ethics right on the top. in <laughs> artificial intelligence. I think this will be an option to, to make. So so for those that maybe weren't able to follow the conversation, um, Pablo is suggesting we merge making artificial intelligence work for equity and social justice with workshop 12, which was social responsibility and ethics in artificial intelligence and east-west dialogue. Um, so in the queue, I have Renata and then G. Renata, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my support for uh, 129. Um, I do not support the merger. I think um, 12 is a slightly different topic and, uh, and equally rich. Uh, I evaluated workshop 129, and uh, I just would, I just recommended I just gave it a lower score on round table. Uh, I would again refer to the great amount we have and also the workshop from that was already uh, approved by consensus uh, out of my hands. That was uh, birds of a feather, but put in the content as a round table. Uh, if these workshops go for mentoring or for conditional acceptance, I would note that they adapt to birds of feather format. And even uh, in this one, if it goes to conditional acceptance, to also try and change the format to a more interactive one. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I uh, have no intention to disagree with merging of these two, two proposals, but uh, I don't know if the speakers from India and China they know each other or they can get along with each other. But uh, um, maybe secretary can bridge the gap and to ask them to talk to each other. If they agree, I, I, I will not disagree. Thank you. Thank you, G. I think that's a good way forward. And Pablo, who had suggested the merger, is nodding his head in accordance as well. Uh, let me go to I have Sala and Jack in the queue and then see if we can find a consensus. Uh, Sala, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first comment is I'd support a merger 
uh, for the sake of efficiency and efficiency given that we don't have uh, a lot of workshop slots. Secondly, in response to uh, our MEG colleague, whom I won't name, uh, I would say that to some extent there has to be some level of discussion on both process and content. Thank you. Thank you, Salah. Jack, you have the floor. Um, just, to, just a comment on the merger, just to note that Workshop 12 is already quite bloated in terms of speakers, so that might play into the um, consideration apart from all of the stuff that was also raised. And also in support, I think um, in the comment by G that um, trade unions will actually be quite a useful um, integration into this session. Thank you, Jack. And Arnold, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Lynn. Just to give my support to uh, to this proposal, of taking account uh, the the comments made. Um, perhaps if we go down the list, uh, if it is possible for you to uh, to 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 introduce the for each uh, workshop the comments made by MAC members, as I have difficulties getting access to uh, the mailing list, so I cannot see the the comments. If that's possible, appreciate it. Thank you, Arnold. We can certainly read them out as we were yesterday when we introduce each one of the workshops. Um, my proposal would be for now that we leave these two as separate workshops um, based on the comment that first it's addressing um, an important topical area, which is new and emerging, artificial intelligence, social justice and equity. It's also addressing the regional imbalance both the workshops are, I think, quite full, and if we take into account some of the suggestions here, in particular G's, for instance, they will gain more panelists. Um, and I do think merging um, workshops is very difficult and do not necessarily lead to a better result. So my proposal would be that we conditionally accept this workshop on the basis of the various comments that have been noted by the members in the room and I'd like to see if I can get a consensus call here in the room and online. So Anya, heads up. <laughs> People support that approach here in the room? Pablo, you don't support the approach? <laughs> I, I can't tell if you're saying you don't support the approach? No, I still believe that the merge is the best uh, solution. But Lynn, I, I don't know how many workshops we will accept right now. I'm a little lost, lost about it. So. My proposal is, about, is, is because I think that we are growing and growing the number of workshop and we have to deal with that. We will go through one or two more now, then we'll go to the main focus sessions, and when we come back, we can give you a count on where we are against the categories. Um, but conditionally accepted does not mean that everything is fixed and all roll in. All right, so, I mean, it's not 100% acceptance that would automatically roll in. We would hope so, but... And again, the, the um, eight was um, a number that won't be um, finally known, it certainly won't be lower than eight, but won't be finally known until the secretary has had time to go through the length of the sessions that have actually been supported. Um, I actually believe there have been quite a number of shorter length sessions supported than um, perhaps in past years, which would free up some additional slots. And that's the kind of um, deep um, uh, massaging that the, that the secretariat does on the mag's behalf. Uh, Anya, are there any comments from online? So only from Avery saying, in general, I do not believe mergers work, but will not oppose. Uh, Ginger and Alejandra said that they don't have comments to this one. Thank you. So we will stay with the proposal that I put forward that at this point we not consider a merger. It's conditionally accepted with the terms here in the room. And we will move on and try and do one or two more. The next one would be ID 200, two networks will shape your digital future, rank 97. Um, the comments, it's a round table. Is, it? Is that the yellow one? It's a round table um, and the comments or one of the dimension of Internet of Things could be merged with others in a more general approach or could be a new format session. Another one was well organized and interesting and it would be better if you could include one or more speakers from the technical community. Now this one, did this come through a wild card suggested by a MAG member? 
Was it Shagoon? Shagoon, do you want to speak? I think you were the no. person of wisdom. Wisdom, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning. Um, I have in my hand here uh, a flyer. And then um, what's on it is a smart village. And then if you read further, it says uh, empowering local entrepreneurs to transform lives in remote off-grid communities through re renewable energy and technology. And then uh, if you go inside, you see how uh, engineers, uh, electrical engineers, were able to actually uh, install solar systems um, in a village to actually light the whole village. And then you, you could see how the village uh, were happy. And then I have in my hand here another one, uh, a light in the dark, and how a band of volunteers brought electricity and internet to a community. Now, why am I saying this? Uh, I'm saying this uh, because this particular workshop seeks to address both the issues of what electricity and then the issues of what internet. Now, in the developing world, uh, we've been talking about broadband, broadband, broadband. Why is uh, why is it that we are not achieving um, the assets that we are all talking about? One of the reasons is because of lack of electricity. There is no power to power the broadband that we are talking about. So for us to be able to solve this problem, we need to address the issues of electricity, uh, look for uh, uh, ways that we can, I mean, ways that can address the electricity issues. And then on top of that, these access issues will be solved. Yes. and. When you, when I, uh, so to talk further to uh, that, uh, I think this particular workshop um, will address the issue of electricity, internet, and then the broadband. And then in the worst case, I will prefer uh, the workshop 1CC uh, be merged with the 200 so that they can uh, actually deal with the, the internet issue, the electricity issue, and then the broadband issue as well. So that's what I have. Thank you. Thank you, Wisdom. Um, we were just pulling up some more details in the background. Um, it's uh, actually a proposal from civil society and the technical community. Um, I have three people in the queue, so we'll turn to them and then see if we can uh, judge where we are. We have, I have Salah, Juan, uh, Mamadou Lo, and G, and Jack. I guess I have five people in the queue. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to support the workshop uh, 200 and um, suggest that uh, in terms of improvement that we rope in IEEE, the brochures that uh, Wisdom's referring to, there's actually a WISIS booth uh, by IEEE, and they've done extensive work and uh, in terms of policy uh, in, in this space. And we're always talking about, particularly in terms of work sh uh, IGF improvements, in how we can better rope these things in together. Uh, and uh, having said that, rope in IEEE and get better geographical diversity, <laughs> noting that the, sub the workshop proponent is from the US and it's heavily, there's one Nigerian, I think there's one, one Nigerian uh, Funmi, eh? Miss Funmi. Yeah, we'd like to see some from Asia and some from the Caribbean and Latin American as well. That's all, Chair. Oh, th thank you. Good comment, Salah. Juan, you have the floor. Uh, Chair, this is another example of the thing that I think that we as a MAG has to interact. When we say that some workshop need improvement, it's not only, well, sometimes it could be only, you know, the speakers. But in this case, I think we have to suggest them with the focus, because the explanation that Segun said is it, it's good. I, I'm sold with him, but it's not what is here. 
Here, I think it has some part of talking refrigerators and all that. I would rather have this for the Dire Straits song of the 80s. <laughs> you know, I like the classics, you know. But um, um, I, I don't want you know, to hear about talking point. refrigerators. Maybe what he said about the power is that. So I would put this conditionally, and not about the, and the conditions are not the speakers this time, but conditionally that the main focus is what Segun says. The difficulty is that for having internet, for having other, we need electricity, and we don't have that yet. Because all these smart cities of light bulbs and this and that, that's interesting, it's been covered elsewhere. But here, the main focus should be what Sagun said. So with that conditionally, and putting that very clearly to the proposals, I will give my uh, approval to this. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Juan, and good points. Just to clarify for the transcript, it was at... It was actually Wisdom who was speaking. I did call Sagoon and Sagoon passed to Wisdom, so it was Wisdom. Um, I think your, your point um, was, was very good, though. And with the ones that have a conditional acceptance, I think going forward, and I think perhaps looking backwards, we can identify um, for those the MAG contact that should go back. And some, it's clear. Um, so Wisdom, if we could um, tag you as a MAG contact to go back, um, assuming the consensus here is that it's conditionally accepted to go back and work with the the proposers, then I think that would help address your, your point, which was a uh, very good one. Uh, so I have Mamadou Lowe, Ji, and Jack in the queue. Mamadou Lowe, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just to say that I would like to support this proposal. As for me, it's uh, electricity is a part of, uh, of now, and a very big part of internet governance, also in Africa. Uh, right now, some in the undeserved region are like still have lack of electricity, and without electricity, we cannot go for the internet in those regions. Thank you very much. Uh, Xi, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, I would like to conditionally support this proposal. Um, um, my suggestion that uh, could uh, this propose proposal uh, merge with. Uh, another proposal, which is uh, original uh, proposal number 42. Uh, the topic is Internet of Things for Smart City, um, because I think uh, these two uh, proposals are quite uh, identical, and uh, there is a good basis for them to work together. And uh, the, the uh, number 42 is, fr uh, is, is from Asia Pacific, and also include, uh, speaks from different regions uh, uh, from Africa and uh, from uh, Eastern Europe, so I, I I I don't know if they can work work together to give give them we can give them more time uh, to have a 90 minute session and uh, to each side to cut cut a few speakers to have con a more concise uh, presentation maybe they can converge. Thank you. Thank you, G. I mean it's an interesting suggestion. Although I think the way Wisdom described it, I, I see them as pretty fundamentally different topics. Um, but let's see what the rest of the MAG comments are, and maybe Wisdom, we can come back to you for your your reaction on a potential merger. In the few, uh, queue, I have J Jack. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think I agree with Juan on this. I will not support the acceptance of this with condition or not. I think that the topical, um, the topical gap that wisdom speaks to is really around looking at electricity and access to the internet, which this session actually does not address. Um, it's looking at something entirely different. Um, I also wouldn't accept the merger because it is also talking about something entirely different, which is around smart cities. Um, and I think this is the case where the pro where the proposed where the proposal comes from makes a difference in terms of the direction of the content. I will very, very much, without a doubt, um, support a workshop like this if it was actually proposed by, say, someone either maybe from India or somewhere in the African region, um, because it will raise the kinds of issues that Wisdom did. Um, but I think in this instance, it does not. So just a point of clarity, I think Juan actually supported it with the strong condition that it be adapted along the lines as Wisdom introduced it. And I think one of the key criteria could be that it needs developing country support or different leadership or different um, proposers. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm supporting Juan's rationale, but I'm having a different point of view. I think the, who the proposer is will actually direct it, um, unless there is a co-proposer that's coming from a different country, by which point we might actually be also kind of directing too much in terms of the conversation that the proposer would like to have, um, just so that it can fit in. So I'm not sure if that will work, actually. I, th I think that's a good point as well, Jack. Um, I thought, G, were you in the queue? Oh, very briefly, I, I agree with Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, um, there was a proposal from Juan, and I think a lot of support for the proposal as wisdom sort of introduced it. Um, I also take Jack's point, which is, um, you know, are we trying to redirect or reshape a proposal um, more than what is appropriate? Um, I, and I'll come to you in a moment, Mike. I do think we could go back to the proposers, give them the feedback, give them an opportunity to reshape it and come back um, with the secretariat again in the role to determine whether or not it meets the MAG's direction, um, which would be a, a, a significantly conditional proposal. Um, let me go to Michael and then see if I can uh, find a consensus. Michael, you have the floor. Mine is a concern. Uh, I'm just trying to look at the issues of majors because at some point you'd find a workshop which is in the white card may have a similar content with a workshop which is in the top 72. Are we only merging the white cards only or there's a possibility that there can be a major from a white card to something to one of the sessions, which is in the top 72 with similar content? I think in, in theory it's possible, but if it's ranked quite highly, one would have to assume that it was a, a pretty strong, well thought out panel with appropriate speakers and topics and asking it to potentially merge with another could, could um, you know, affect it negatively, let's just say. So in, in, in uh, theory, yes, I think in practice probably doesn't happen very often at all. If there's something that you think specifically we could, could look at for this one, then let us know. Um, if it was a general question, then, then fine. Um, Sala, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to offer brief comments in relation to, it shouldn't matter if the proponent was the US Civil Society. Uh, if we were to recommend that it's conditional where you know you encourage geographical diversity at the end of the day we want to maintain a level of neutrality as MEG members treat everybody equally sort of thing not to impose our views to think that uh, just because an agency or something is going to redirect certain issues the whole idea of bringing diverse people around the table is to robustly dialogue having said that I'd just like to uh, mention that Again, we just need to increase geographical diversity. Thank you, Sala. And Renata, you had the floor, and then I'm going to try and find consensus. You have the floor. Support the proposal without observations. Thank you very much, and thank you for your succinctness. Are there any um, comments online, Anya? So at this point, um, I mean, I think there was a fairly significant support for the proposal. Um, I note that um, there was a significant interest from the African region and some of the representatives here, which again is an imbalance um, in our geographic. Um, maybe we could find a sort of halfway house here and ask um, wisdom to maybe with the secretariat work with the proposers to see if they were amenable to um, reshaping the workshop along these lines, which means they would have to uh, address the, the diversity of the panel, possibly the format and that sort of thing. And if so, um, note that we would sort of provisionally pull them into the agenda. But as it stands now, if the workshop does not change and as submitted, it is not accepted. I think that was the, is that a, a consensus and a path forward the room could support? And the online room, can the online room support that as well? Can I make a quick comment? 
Uh, yes, Juan. Yeah, I, I don't want to challenge this decision, but I want to make a comment because I think this is, could be something that, um, of the work that I believe that the MAC should do. If you see some of the speakers in this, because this had happened before, have you been, this, what I'm going to say now, did it sound alien to you? Have you been to some workshop that it looks like a sales pitch from a company? Have, have you happened that? And, and if you look of some of the speakers and the companies and the services they provide, I don't, I, I, I really think that, of course, they know, but I'd rather listen this as Wisdom said, from the need part, uh, and, and not from companies that, uh, check, check out the companies of the speakers. I think this is the kind of detailed work that we as MAG have to do in, in order to ensure that workshops don't become a sales pitch from, from companies. Uh, and uh, well, I think that's enough. No, th thank you, Juan. I think it's a good point. I think the need aspect is, is critically important, and I think would, the better we all understand that, the better, of course, uh, the progress we can make. Then the companies can move in, but... Anya, was there a comment from the online on the chair's proposal? Yes, so there is a comment from Avery and Ginger. I'm reading, just give me a second, reading a comment from Avery. Yes, do not support asking a workshop to change to be accepted. And then from Ginger, with the provision that we take note that if we completely change organizers and content, we have rejected the proposal and have actually created a new workshop proposal. Okay. Yes, that's all. Sorry, sorry. That's natural selection, Darwin. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think this is this is a very a very relevant discussion because it's one thing to choose or select the workshops, and then uh, uh, based on what they write on text on a paper or online, and what then it, they actually become. And and since I have been uh, in in the core team of Eurodic since its its beginning. Um, we have developed a, a fairly sophisticated set of, of session principles that go about diversity, but also about things like interactivity, so there shouldn't be a panel of 20 people and no space for the rest of the participants to engage. So no panel at all or small panels, maximum time for, for participants because that, that solves a lot of the problems or the biases that you may have on the panel or on selecting a panel. And, and at Eurodic, um, we have so-called uh, uh, subject matter experts that, that is a system that has developed over the years that is actually supporting the organizers of, of workshops, of plenaries, in and pushing them also if necessary. There's a thin line so that they live up to the expectations in the sense of inclusivity, respecting diversity, respecting all relevant opinions, and also being interactive and giving some space to the whole public, not just to the ones that uh, happen to sit on the panel. It works more or less uh, well every time, of course, because in the end still this depends on individuals, it depends on the moderators that you choose, etc., etc. but some form of support with a necessary authority also to guide or push in a certain direction of what we actually, of what types of discussions we would want to have at the IGF is something that maybe we should also elaborate a little bit more clearly on um, because that's, as I said, what you have, you can write in a proposal whatever you want, what you actually do in six or nine months time is not necessarily the same and there's room for marge de manoeuvre for getting closer to what we want to have or what the community or the, 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 the participants want to have or further away. So I think this is 
this is something that we should keep in mind and, and maybe spend some time on, on discussing our methods and, and ways as the MAC to, to, to accompany and support uh, organizers that, we, that uh, passed. Thank you very much. I can say, Thomas, that you're a good wedding planner. Um, I th thank you, Thomas. I think those were very, very interesting, very useful comments. And my comments earlier, I, I understand, weren't um, on the mic. What I was um, asking for was the MAG's support to move forward in, a, in what I kind of said was um, an unusual way for us. And I think Thomas um, outlined where I think it can be more helpful. I'm saying that because of the various imbalances it addresses, which is both topic and regional. Um, I like the need perspective of it. So um, with the MAG support, I would like to ask Wisdom to work with the Secretariat to go back to the um, organizers and um, see if we can reshape it along the lines of Wisdom's introduction. If that does not happen, just so we're clear, this workshop is not accepted, is my reading of the MAG's decision. Then we will proceed along um, those lines. If we can take a, a pause now from this exercise, and I said when we come back to it, um, we will have a count of where we are against the various categories from, from the Secretariat. What I'd like to do in the next hour and a half between now and the lunch break is move to the portion of the agenda that's the main focus session. Um, as I said, Thomas is with us um, for, I don't know, another half hour maybe. Um, and uh, obviously, as a host country, they have a considerable responsibility towards plenaries and opening ceremonies and things. And I think it's important that we hear from them um, and their desires. The Swiss government's actually been very active in trying to help us find ways to kind of reinvigorate and energize um, in response to some of the comments that we've heard through um, various suggestions for improvements to the IGF. So I'd like to give um, him and Jorge uh, time to walk us through that. Eleanor has put up the main sessions grid just so we all have the same framework in front of us with respect to what we're talking about. The opening ceremony there on the day one, which is a Monday this year, has always been the prerogative of the host country. That's when there's a formal opening ceremony and then tradition when we've had um, all the um, speakers. And so I will turn it over to Thomas there. I think that's an appropriate level of introduction in terms of roles and responsibilities towards um, host country? Ho host country and the UN. <laughs> Sorry, host country and the UN. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. And just to make very clear that, of course, we do work in hand in hand uh, and brain in brain or whatever needs to be uh, there for cooperation uh, with, with the UN and, and with everybody. Um, well, maybe. Why are we proposing what we are proposing? Let's, let's start at the very beginning. I'm one of those who has uh, participated in all the 11 IGFs so far, and we've witnessed with not too much of enthusiasm uh, that uh, uh, I get feedback from gut and keep getting feedback from many sites that um, what usually happened in the opening ceremonies and then since the introduction of the so-called day zero in the high level parts of the day zero um, was a more or less one dimensional or one directional sequence of pre-written speeches um, of uh, uh, high level representatives that most of the time were not really interacting with each other um, and that there was, at least with us, but with others, uh, with a lot of others that we heard from, uh, not fully satisfactory in the sense that we thought that it would be, on the one hand, of course, it is good and necessary and, and, and relevant to have high-level representatives from governments, but also from, from the other stakeholders with us, because they should actually not just read and speak, but in particular also listen to others. And uh, we do not think that to continue with, with a set of monologue speeches is, 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 is the ideal thing. So we are trying to come up with a slightly different approach in a hope that we'll get the trade-off between having enough spaces um, that 
is uh, are considered attractive for for high level representatives while allowing and supporting or pushing them whatever you call it to be a little bit more interactive and also not just talk but then then leave but also to listen uh, to each other and maybe not even to only other high level persons but experts of all levels from all stakeholders um, would be something that we should at least try at the beginning of the second or uh, more or less the beginning of the second to ten years term so that's the idea it's very easily said it's not that easily done because I think most of us uh, the previous host and the UN have tried to do this probably every time so uh, there's no miracle that we will uh, be able to do but um, our, our, our intent is really to to try it a little different and then we see how it goes and again we would need all the support of everybody to convince these uh, and explain this to, to high-level people that it is not the idea is not necessarily to just go there for a three or five or whatever minutes speech have a few bilaterals and then leave but to actually really listen to others uh, and that is to the benefit of, of, of everybody and and um, so what we are proposing and it has this has been introduced I think to you by Jorge on, on the mailing list already to some extent um, is is uh, that we would have um, a very short opening ceremony um, with uh, representatives from from the UN as well from the host country and 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 the the Geneva uh, city and or or Canton and then we would have an interactive roundtable dialogue um, following this on on the first day that will not that be not that many spaces for for uh, high level representatives as if you just list uh, 20 or 30 or, or whatever uh, five or four or six minute speeches so in addition to that we could use one of the sessions for instance on tuesday morning as a thematic say one of the thematic sessions we could use it as a special offer to uh, high level persons uh, that would allow them also to have, if they need a space for them, uh, to give them a formal space. But of, and, and we should also remind everybody, including also the organizers, that they uh, um, they could use all the other main sessions actually as prominent slots for high-level experts. Um, so that is, of course, something that, at least in our perception of the intention of the Internet Governance Forum as a dialogue, is something that we should try and use basically all main sessions as prominent slots for uh, high-level uh, persons to, to participate. I'll stop here and, and give the floor, would like to give the floor to Jorge for some, some more details because he was the one that has been uh, taking a, a detailed, uh, a more detailed look at, at this and so Jorge please compliment if you wish. Thank you. Hello and good morning to everyone. Um, thank you for giving me the floor, Thomas. Um, in any case, I think that uh, the, the main elements of how we intend to organize uh, these uh, so-called high-level thematic sessions have been explained by Thomas. If you have any feedback, comments, uh, suggestions, we are, of course, very, very happy to take them into account. We are still in uh, preparation mode, uh, both uh, within our hierarchy and uh, with uh, the UN, with uh, Cheng Yitai and his team on this, because we, we will have other uh, like protocol uh, uh, issues which we will have to deal later on uh, once we have at least a common proposal of uh, how we would like to organize this uh, thematic sessions. As to the, the one on uh, Monday uh, afternoon, uh, Monday evening, as said, we would like to have the opening ceremony as short as possible in um, Guadalajara, Jalisco, if I don't remember incorrectly, 
we had uh, an opening ceremony of around 50 minutes. We would like to cut it a little bit down. Perhaps it helps that uh, we won't have so nice, uh, such nice mariachis. Uh, we are looking for Swiss mariachis, but uh, that is perhaps a bit difficult. But uh, we, we are exploring uh, possibilities, uh, yodeling, <laughs> but uh, something that is also uh, acceptable to the ears of, uh, of other stakeholders worldwide. So that's for the opening ceremony. As to the thematic session, after that, instead of having like 25 minute speeches, we are really of the opinion that it would be much better to, to have some interactive format with uh, VIPs, high level people from the different stakeholder groups engaging in a discussion. And now that we are still at the beginning of the new 10 year mandate of the IGF and uh, there are so many things going on in the digital environment, in the frameworks of cooperation. Uh, we w think that that would be uh, a good uh, topic to, to deal with. We are playing with the idea of having, after the opening ceremony, still our president here to engage in that discussion with uh, such uh, uh, high-level representatives. But as Thomas said, uh, if we want to make it interactive, uh, you cannot have more than 10 people on the, on the podium. So that's uh, why, uh, as a shared idea with the IGF secretariat, with uh, Lynn, uh, appeared the, the possibility of uh, taking the space of, uh, of Tuesday morning and uh, transform it into a high-level thematic session where we could uh, uh, give space to those uh, high-level stakeholders that uh, cannot make it because of uh, time reasons on, uh, on Monday afternoon and have there also a, a broad discussion on a topic of, uh, of general interest, of political interest. And one of the ideas we are playing with is to uh, retire the main session proposal we made on democracy, uh, public trust, and how digitization is affecting that, and uh, use that idea, that topic, as basis for uh, developing this high-level thematic session on the Tuesday morning. So uh, that's, uh, I think, the, the level of development uh, we have. Uh, um, but I, I'm happy to, to answer any, any questions, and I, I'll do my best. Thank you. So I hope the, the proposal is clear. If not, that should be our first order business to make sure we understand it, and then we can comment. So let's use the electronic speaking queue again. Um, which is empty, but there are flags up in the room. So no, it's not empty. Is it not empty? Yeah. There's four. Wait a minute. Yeah. There are four. Okay, it is absolutely not empty. <laughs> Mine's obviously refreshing very slowly because it says it's empty. So in the queue I have um, Sala, Renata, Juan, Liesel, and G. Um, Sala, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, your co-chair, Thomas, and also to uh, George for the excellent uh, presentation. I'm very excited at the intent, particularly in terms of uh, removing the monologue and encouraging the dialogue, which is what the IGF is actually about, particularly um, in terms of uh, getting you know, the opening and the high level leaders to do that. And in terms of the next, I don't know, how many years do we have left, eight? Nine? nine right so especially with the nine years that's left and the fact that we're having it in switzerland which is renowned for your neutrality i think it's just brilliant so congratulations and fully support the the innovation and the idea 
Thank you, Sala. And, and Thomas, jump in any time you want, and, and I'll just manage the queue for you. Um, Renata, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, and uh, thank you for our uh, host country uh, presentation, indeed. Um, it looks quite different, our uh, main session grid this year. And I would uh, support the view that the sessions have to be more interactive. However, um, I think that uh, we really need to ascertain that the workshops that are going to feed into the main sessions and the interaction with the intersessional activities is there. Because the way I see it, we have lots of workshops, many with, quite, uh, with topics that can be uh, similar, and uh, we don't really have, uh, I'm concerned about the process for deciding on them. Some proposals uh, are still being worked on, and last year we had a lot of micromanaging of the, the main sessions, and that also did not lead to uh, the expected results. Um, I will also note that I am currently uh, involved in uh, two main sessions proposals uh, as co-organizer. I am proposing with Zina Bruharb a uh, main session on human and social dimensions on the internet, and with Kenta, uh, uh, the proposal on digitization. But I, uh, uh, my, my work with Zina, I can continue not being a lead on this proposal if it, it is a problem being a, a MAG member in two proposals. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Renata. I would like to keep our comments specific to the proposal from the Swiss government on the thematic, the use of one of the main sessions as a thematic session and we'll hit the other main session discussions uh, later point. Juan, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Regarding the main session, I have a comment and a suggestion, and I have a question uh, also. The comment is that I have no comment. Maybe that's the, the first I agree with. I think it's very well presented, so, uh, so that's no comment. So I will go to the suggestion. The suggestion is that you have chosen in the title a word that is very difficult to translate to Spanish, polity, or polity. 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 It's very difficult to translate to Spanish. I think there's a list of the English word different to translate, like, I think serendipity is one of those, those difficult words, and, you know, to, to, to move to other languages. And I think this is in the list. So I, I, I suggest... No, no, Thomas, it's the, pr the point is that this, this is a word that has a huge meaning behind. So I suggest to put the meaning instead of the word in order to, when it's translated to other languages, will be more understood. I, I, oh, for, for, I think it's a suggestion. I um, take it. And my question... Chengatai has just said, to, to interrupt, apologies, but that it's a working title, so we will definitely take any okay, suggestion. Okay, it's a suggestion. And then my, my question is, uh, Chair, are we going to see the day zero proposals? I always have great concerns about day zero uh, mm -hmm. events. So yes, the, um, when we're going the to do it? Secretariat will share the day zero, and we also have an agreement that the Secretariat will share the open forum when it comes in as well. Again, that's not the responsibility of the MAG. That is spent through the Secretariat in the UN. But it's clear that if there was a strong objection from anyone in the MAG, that it would be taken up with the Secretariat in the UN. But just so we're not confusing responsibility, we will see them when they're complete. So it will be done uh, online? Uh, it'll probably it'll be done online, not and we here. can do it on one of our virtual calls. No, th those calls are not closed. Because yet. last year we had a chance to to review day zero. Remember in New York in in June. Th okay. Yeah, they're not done yet. No, the submission's not. not done yet. Thank you. Uh, Liesel, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much uh, to our host government for putting, um, well, first of all, for hosting the, <laughs> the IGF this year and for putting so much um, thought and energy into, uh, into the role and um, trying to come put forward some very innovative, innovative approaches. And like many other 
before, as I've spoken before me, I'm all for trying to find innovative ways to um, have dialogue rather than, um, you know, speechifying in the opening ceremony. Um, in looking at this proposal, though, and it is nice to have it on a um, grid like this because I'm I, I do good with I do well with pictures, <laughs> um, and what the picture shows me though is that the high-level thematic session on day two um, takes away a main session from the from the slot. First of all, of those that we do subsequently have to pick from, and we have, we have very good proposals for a main session. Um, I, I appreciate, Jorge, your, dis your um, description of the proposal and the thought of, of changing the main session proposal to a high-level thematic discussion sort of on the same topic. And I would just point out that one thing that this proposal doesn't benefit, that what would the main sessions benefit from that this proposal doesn't is that um, the requirement in the main session guidelines for consultation and engagement with the stakeholders in crafting the main sessions between now and and the IGF, and so I'm 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 noodling this one. I'm not I'm not sure it's I, I, we lose a main session slot, um, and it changes the nature of what that session will be if it's a high level thematic session. I have no issue with the top, you know, the topic that we p was put forward. I have no issue with trying to make things innovative and in, in, in incorporating the high, uh, high level folks that we want to in incorporate and integrate into the program. I'm just not sure if this helps that. And I'm worried about the main session, not benefiting from the main session guideline approach. Thank you. Thank you, Liesl. G, you have the floor. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Through you, I would like to ask our Swiss colleagues to clarify on some points. First is the meaning of digital polity. Does it mean global internet governance? And the second thing is, uh, as I understand, uh, um, both in, uh, the main sessions and the high-level thematic discussion uh, session, they are all thematic in nature, right? And, uh, and the, the statements or interventions should be short and concise. Um, in that case, if, if, because it's interactive, do we still have to register in advance for the chances to speak? Because our high-level officials would like to know you know, in advance, what should they should do? They to, it doesn't work if they come to to the meeting and then wait in the queue and to, plant the flag, to put up the flag and don't know whether they would uh, have the chance to speak or not. And uh, who would be the one, the I, the secretariat or the the host country? Who would be the one to manage the speaks list? And these are the things we would like to clarify. Thank you. Let me turn to Chengatai or Thomas and see if either one of them has to comment at this point in time. Thank you. Well, um, there wouldn't be a thing called speakers list, probably. It would be a list of participants in an interactive dialogue. At least that's uh, how we would try and frame it. Um, which, of course, would include that whoever is part of that dialogue will have the right to speak or the opportunity to speak. But it shouldn't be, as we said, we, should, we, sh we shouldn't just uh, call it a round table and, and then uh, give the floor one after the other to have his monologue speech. That's not, at least definitely not, our idea. And, and, and I think with regard to, to other uh, things that have been brought up, um, yes, it is. Uh, it is not easy. It is definitely not easy. Everything also has a price uh, it, to some extent. So there will be a trade-off. Um, with regard to Liesl's uh, remark about, about losing a main session, and, and uh, uh, Jorge, please, please compliment. Um, our idea, I think, would be to get as close as possible with this thematic session 
to how a main session is organized that for me would personally would include that the, these high level uh, representatives would also uh, be interacting with the audience, that the audience would have uh, opportunities to, to make comments, ask questions, like in any other main session. So it wouldn't, at least that's, it would, shouldn't be a closed VIP session. Um, so, but, and, and, and this is a question of communicating this to, 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 to VIPs. Some, some may say, well, I have to have my prepared uh, three minutes intervention, anything else I won't do. Okay, others will be looking forward to having an exchange. Um, so I think there is a flexibility on, on how we do it. Um, we just try to, as I said, have it as interactive and inclusive as possible, and at the same time trying to make it attractive uh, for, for, for VIPs. So we'll somehow have to find um, something in, the, in that middle ground. And the more innovative we are, the more it is, the less it is a trade-off, but rather a win-win. But that's something that we need to develop together, I would say. Jorge, do you want to add uh, some more ideas from our side? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, as I say, so nonverbal communication. Yes. Uh, hello, uh, and uh, thank you for giving me the floor again. Um, we have uh, uh, made, uh, going back perhaps first to, to Liesl's intervention, um, I think we, we have tried to stick very much to the rules of the main sessions. So we, we have uh, proposed the main session that would go now to this high level thematic uh, session slot. Um, it has been supported by different MAG members. It has been endorsed by, by one MAG member at least, or, or a couple of them. So I think we, we have been uh, trying as host country to, to really play by the rules of the MAG, of the multi-stakeholder rules. We have uh, made workshop proposals uh, as uh, any other uh, uh, proposer. So uh, I think we, we really want to, to stick to, to the rules and, uh, and uh, have this as bottom-up as, as possible. So I think it's, it's a proposal from our side, and Thomas, of course, can correct me. This is a kind of an offer that we uh, try to, uh, with the convening power which we may have as a government, uh, with uh, the engagement uh, at the highest level from our president, that we make uh, uh, sure that uh, these high-level sessions are populated with real high-level people, and this will um, gain uh, attractiveness for the whole program of the IGF. Uh, one of the reasons why we uh, didn't want to engage in a high level track before the IGF in form of a zero day or a host country zero day was that we really believe in the IGF itself. We don't want to make the zero day great. We don't want to make a site event great. We want to make the IGF relevant. We want to center the attention on the program of the IGF so that's an, an offer on our side. Of course, the time is limited, so we, we cannot have everything. But uh, as I said, we have tried to, to play by the rules as, as much as possible, and this is a, an offer from our side, which we honestly think would be for the benefit of uh, the the program, its attractiveness, and its uh, um, and it's gaining attention from from the broader public and also from political and business and civil society uh, high level stakeholders. Um, on 
Juan's remark from before, <laughs> which is similar to what uh, Jean also mentioned. Well, we, we, we didn't really think too much uh, about uh, what is polity. We, we are not English native speakers anyway. So, uh, and uh, uh, m myself as, as also a Spanish native speaker, I, I, I should have thought about that before, before using polity. But uh, in the end, we are uh, trying to describe with that title, which is absolutely a working title, we can change it, is that, as I said before, there are many discussions on uh, an international global frameworks of cooperation in the field of digital issues. What uh, was termed before as internet governance, but which uh, we also perhaps with a little bit of a marketing afterthought, uh, thought that is not so catchy or so sexy anymore. And we wanted to use this more digital uh, nomenclature to, to make it more attractive. But of course, this is uh, something open to, to interpretation. And then returning to how the high-level people would participate. Uh, for sure, we would have to look into this with the IGF Secretariat, with the United Nations, who are real experts in how to keep the, the right balance. But we would need to take some decisions, of course, to have uh, some people on the panel and some people not on the panel. If we have two sessions of this kind, and we don't want to uh, revert to a sequence of speeches. We can talk perhaps about 10 people on Monday afternoon because it's uh, 100 minutes of, uh, of time. And on Tuesday morning, probably we could have more people because in principle it's a, th a three hour session. Perhaps we could have a break or whatever. We can be creative uh, to to have perhaps 15, 20 people engaging on the podium in the discussions. And of course, the idea is to make it, make it interactive with the audience. So with open mics, and uh, there would be a chance for, for those who cannot make it to the list, just for grounds of that there's no, not time for everybody could could have their their air time, so to say. Um, by the way, if we return to to previous meetings, um, there haven't been 20 ministers at these kinds of mini uh, these kinds of meetings. So 20 real CEOs, very very high level people. So if we are counting now with between. 10 plus 20, 30 slots, 30 podium slots, so to say. I think we would have uh, uh, space for, for everyone to, to be present. And I think we, we can be creative. And as I said before, um, we will do this with the guidance and advice of uh, our colleagues from the United Nations who know very well how to balance rightly. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas and, and Jorge. And I mean, I certainly appreciate all the efforts to um, help us raise the profile of the IGF. I think it's something that the community has wanted for a long time. At the same time, I know from having been in this community for so long that some of these languages like raise the profile and um, our concepts that parts of the community are not all that comfortable with. But I think we need to understand that it really is critical if we want our work to be taken up appropriately across the world, if we want our work to be uh, attended to, if we want great MAG representatives to continue, if we want more funds, more support, more donors, then raising the profile is just, it, it's just <coughs> something we need to do. And we certainly want to do that in a multi-stakeholder concept. 
Um, could I ask Thomas or Jorge to just state again what the working title is of the high-level thematic session on day two? I know it comes from your main session proposal, but do you have that or does Jorge? Thank you. Um, I don't have it in front of me on, 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 on paper or on the screen, but uh, uh, the idea is to, to build, and that is something that I guess for politicians uh, is something that they should be at least interested in, is, is to, to frame the thematic sessions about uh, the opportunities and also challenges of the use of, of ICTs and new technologies, including social media and what have you, uh, to, let's say, enhance democratize um, public sphere, public debate, political discussions, um, political mobilization, and so on and so forth, and the effects that this has on, on, on democracy, on public opinion, and uh, as we have seen uh, in, in the past months and, and years, um, this can go in many directions, but it's something that probably uh, everybody is interested in because um, these new technologies influence uh, the way that decisions, uh, votes, elections, decisions about issues are made uh, and, and that affect all our daily lives that also have economic uh, uh, effects. And so we think that this is an issue um, that, that would be of interest of, of high level and ordinary uh, people from all uh, stakeholders. Um, I don't know if we have the latest version of a concrete title. I would refer to Jorge for this, but that's, let's say, the, the, the idea of, of the discussion. Thank you, Jorge. Jorge, do you? Hello, <laughs> and sorry for coming again. Well, the, for day two, the, the title is again a working title, and uh, we would start with uh, what we had uh, presented as a main session proposal, which is the impact of digitization on politics, public trust, and democracy. So its uh, impact can be positive, negative, could be uh, with uh, all the different uh, shades of, of gray. And uh, we use the, the buzzword digitization, which is more attractive also. To, to at least some, some of the audiences we are trying to attract to, to the IGF. And uh, of course, as, as Thomas said, uh, then there are many opportunities with uh, digital tools for improving consultations to the people, uh, democratic tools of participation, e-voting, uh, polls, uh, uh, the association, uh, many different aspects which uh, may be enhanced by, by these tools. And on the other side, of course, the, there are challenges. Uh, and we think that uh, uh, a discussion at a high level in, in the IGF is really the, the perfect setting for having uh, all stakeholders, all regions, of uh, other worlds uh, having a debate on, on this and interacting with, with the audience. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. Um, I'll go to the queue in a moment, but I, I think I just want to try and underline something um, to make sure that we're clear, is that I, I don't actually see this proposal for Tuesday morning as a high-level session masquerading as something else. I actually see it as a main session that um, I believe the Swiss are trying to work to getting very senior people in from both governments and private sector and, and other stakeholders. So it would look like any other main session. And, um, and I hope I'm not working this too hard, but if, if we were to see a main session proposal came in that had a really interesting subject matter with a number of high-level speakers on it and it fit within our main session format, I think our, our initial approach to it might be different than thinking of it, and I think when we first started talking about this, I think a lot of people thought of it as just a second high-level event that somehow moved into our IGF space from day zero. And I, and I, I think that is, is not at all what it is. So 
I think I'm probably asking people to just check their frameworks and their minds for a minute and keep an open mind as we go through the discussion. Um, and I said, I hope I'm not working that too, too hard. Um, Carlos, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first thing, uh, I, I just would like to take this opportunity to uh, congratulate um, Thomas and Jorge, uh, not only for the work they've, they've, they've been doing here, but also uh, for the work that I've been following in the, the GAC, for instance, I think uh, Thomas has been doing an excellent, great job as uh, a GAC chair, and uh, and now I see that you know his uh, talent is also uh, a, a benefit for us as uh, uh, as a coordinator for this uh, for this IGF. So uh, thank you, Thomas, and thank you, Jorge, for your work. Uh, uh, particularly uh, with regards to uh, uh, this idea of having the, this uh, Tuesday uh, high-level session about um, the impact of digitalization on politics, public trust, etc. I think it's personally think it's a real good idea. Um, uh, th this is by definition a political um, uh, topic. Uh, and if we consider uh, the, the, the context uh, we live in, where uh, problems like uh, fake news, uh, mistrust in digital technology, uh, digital security, threats to, to data security, privacy concerns, etc., etc., have become a global concern, uh, um, I think it's very important to, to treat this as a, a, a political uh, high-level topic. Uh, a huge number of polls, uh, both in Europe or in, in the United States, j just to mention some of them, Eurobarometer, U.S. Census Bureau, Center for International Governance Innovation, Pew Research Center, uh, even the OECD uh, made some uh, polls. They, they clearly show that uh, the trust in the digital technology and also in the, the cyberspace is, is declining. It's clearly declining. Um, uh, with uh, a feeling of people losing control of their data, but also their, their online identity, etc., etc. Um, so there is a, I think there is a growing mistrust in the, in the cyberspace. Uh, so this is very important to, to discuss, and this should be discussed in the highest possible level, in the political level. Uh, not to mention the positive aspects, because we, it, we, we don't only have negative aspects. Uh, I think like uh, how the digital tools uh, 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 work as a facilitator in terms of people having access to public services, to public information. Uh, uh, but also uh, the news way of political and social mobilization, um, etc. So I think it's a very good idea to have those issues, both the positive aspects and the negative aspects, uh, the way they affect people's lives in a good and or, or a bad way, to be discussed in a, in a very uh, the highest pol possible political level. So it's a very good idea, and we've been talking about ways of raising the profile of IGF and engaging. Uh, 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 governments to this debate, so this is a way of doing that, you know, because this is the sort of matter that would uh, 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 interest or concern uh, 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 high-level political people. Uh, you know, I think this is a very good idea to do. So, uh, uh, congratulations again, and you have my my full support. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Shagun, you have the floor, but. You appear to have stepped out of the room, so we'll come back to you. Uh, Flavio, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, I am a little bit still confused about the proposals. If we see the, the, the grid, uh, we have one opening high-level session. If we look at our, uh, and then a, a second high-level session on Tuesday morning. If we look at our list of main session proposals, we see two proposals from the Swiss government. My question is, do these two proposals from the main sessions list correspond to those two high-level proposals? No. We have, in fact, three different proposals from the Swiss government. A high-level opening no, and no, then no, two no, main no, session no, no, proposals? No, Flavio, let, let me stop. I'll ask Jorge to speak. No, the, that needs to be updated. 
So I don't know if it's Jorge or Thomas, what, but what do you mean by updated? One of the main uh, session proposals Jorge, uh, Jorge has been will dropped. explain what the status is of them. So this is just. Uh, I have other questions no, also. But, yeah. Okay, but that would be a good one. So we'll come back to that right after you finish your comments. Should be cleared up. Okay. So my my second uh, my second question, still regarding the, the proposals from from the Swiss government, is that if we uh, will use one of the slots we traditionally have for the main session, and the idea is to have this high-level thematic session uh, in the form of a main session, then it should follow our guidelines for main sessions. Uh, we have developed in the MAG along the years a set of guidelines uh, regarding diversity of speakers and interaction with the audience and so on and so, so forth. So I would strongly recommend that uh, even if we accept, accept the, one of those proposals from the Swiss government to fill this slot, that we still try to organize this as a traditional main session, following the guidelines, having the required diversity, and so on. So this, I think it's important. Another problem I see is that we have 45 minutes left until 1 p.m., and then we have other seven main session proposals on the list that we have not yet addressed it and uh, we have to the and we have a, a tough problem uh, before us because we have only five slots left then we have one proposal from the NRIs for a full slot one proposal for the dynamic coalitions for a half slot 90 minutes then we would have only three and a half remaining slots for six or seven additional proposals so we have to address this problem, and we have 45 minutes to do this. And it pays for all of us to be succinct, therefore. <laughs> um, if I could, with, with um, the queue, go directly to Jorge or Thomas to address this so that we clear up that point of confusion, and then um, we'll come back to the queue. Jorge? Thank you so much, Lynn. <clears throat> and thank you, Flavio, for, for the question. Um, hopefully, I'm. Uh, we are clearer now. Um, we had filed uh, uh, some weeks ago two main session proposals in this spirit of playing by the MAC rules. Uh, one of those uh, uh, main session proposals has been taken over, so to say, by a number of other MAC members and uh, in fact has been merged with uh, the proposal that was being prepared by Kenta. And uh, we are now in a supporting role in that main session, so I don't think it should be viewed as a Swiss proposal anymore. That was the creating an inclusive workforce in the digital economy which is also a working title, I guess. And the other uh, main session, which uh, was uh, endorsed by two MAC uh, members at least, uh, the impact of digitization on politics, public trust, and democracy, is what would go as the basis of the Tuesday morning high-level thematic session. So uh, to sum up, if you look at the grid, um, the, the five main sessions uh, that are uh, empty uh, would not be uh, in encumbered by any Swiss uh, main session proposal because we, we don't have any other Swiss main session proposal left. We would have the day two uh, morning high-level thematic session and uh, of course the, the Monday evening which uh, in any case uh, was uh, always clear that uh, that would be the opening session so the the only alternative in principle would be the sequence of speeches hope this is now a bit clearer but I see my ambassador <laughs> Thank you. Just to, to, to add what, what Jorge said and maybe to, to reflect on what, what uh, Flavio has said, we could actually call it 
instead of a high level thematic session, we could call it a high level main session and show that would show that this is something new that again I think we should apply to the extent for possible the the, the, the the principles and 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 the thinking behind the main sessions um if you get uh thirty v i p s uh you cannot artificially maybe invent or modify the balance uh, depending on where they come from, uh, like you can maybe with, with other experts. So there may be a need for a little bit of flexibility in terms of basing, uh, relying on, on the, the rules that are usually applied to, to main sessions, uh, which is what we do in, 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 in our small European um, dialogue uh, as well and this is of course a very delicate issue because you don't want to create precedents that endanger the whole let's say fundament of of the nature of the IGF um, this is very clear and we would never uh, want to do this um, but this does not mean I think that we cannot apply certain flexibility also with the aim to to uh, let's say, given the broader context of, of the discussions where people are not satisfied with the level of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, political outreach or political impact of the IGF, and as, as many of you have said, um, I mean, this is this is a, a, still an experiment. It is a stumbling forward uh, to some extent, and, and if we try and do things a little different every year, we can always uh, uh, have the discussion later what has actually worked and what hasn't. Um, but but uh, yeah, we if we stick to what we had and w are not willing to to and not have the courage to do things a little new, a little different, um, I think we'll never get to use the potential that is still unused as we think in 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 the IGF. So, but I, I think it may make sense to call it the high level thematic session to show the link of the logic of the uh, approach or expectation that, that this is still something that is uh, uh, not a closed thing uh, for VIPs completely detached from the rest of the world, uh, but that we are actually trying to not just break the silos vertically uh, or horizontally, but also vertically, that we try and get so-called VIPs together with so-called experts uh, in a dialogue which is which is at least something that that uh, uh, is very dear to us i hope that that helps thank you thank you can you just comment on um would that session actually be multi-stakeholder as well I, I think you said that earlier is it meant to be it's a question in the chat room meant to be st sort of more strictly high level of course I was trying to make a joke, but I think this is too serious, so I will refrain for once from making silly remarks. So, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, thank you, Thomas. I'm going back to the queue. I have Shagoon in the queue. Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to appreciate the uh, preparation and the commitment uh, that we've seen so far on the part of the organizers. But um, I want to, first, again, I, I will also appreciate um, the fact that we are going to have a new approach to engaging in the high-level uh, panel, because um, this has been a problem, too, even in our country, where you have the so-called high-level section, and you have the government officials coming for such meetings, and they will deliver the speech and uh, the stakeholders will not have the opportunity of interacting and all that. And they will communicate what they want you to hear, but they don't usually have the feedback from that community. I think it's a very good one, and I really want us to actually uh, uh, maintain it. Now, secondly, I remember when I was in Mexico, I had that, be, uh, I had that, that kind of privilege to be in Mexico. I discovered that um, I was expecting to see uh, the presence of the uh, His Excellency, the um, either Prime Minister or the President of the, of that country, but unfortunately, we were on the, again, not given that privilege to have such high-profile personalities in our midst. 
So I don't know if uh, it's going to be possible to have a commitment from your own side that we are going to have either the prime minister or the president of uh, this country in um, to be, you know, part of the high level uh, section that we have here. I I'm saying it because it will also enhance the visibility and the importance attached to the Internet Governance Forum. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Shagoon. Just, just one second. Was there something you? Um, thank you, Shagoon. I mean, and I know, I know we are taking some time um, with this topic, but I, I think it's important. I think it will, you know, it is easing us into the rest of the main session discussion. But I think it's important because it is addressing some of the key areas for improvement that we've identified before. Um, it is new, and I think it's recognized that, you know, there are some boundaries being pushed, which is why I think we should give it um, the additional time for some some discussion here. So um, if you have um, some additional comments, please get in the queue. Um, there are five or so folks. Um, we'll probably take this up to the lunch hour, close to the lunch hour. Maybe we can do some other kind of high-level framing for the main session um, before we break for lunch. But in the queue right now, I have Slobodan. Slobodan, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, I would like to briefly stress again the importance of uh, having the main session as interactive as possible and ensure a robust remote participation support. For example, by making the main session room laid out in a manner that brings the remote moderator and technical facilities for remote participation as close to the main stage. I mean, Thomas, you're probably already thinking in that direction, but uh, I had to stress this once again because it was not always the case in all of the IGFs. Uh, second, uh, it's related to one thing that uh, keeps uh, a static appearance in our uh, grid for years, and uh, this is uh, this is the open mic session. Actually, um, I wonder could we evaluate this slot briefly? Um, it doesn't seem to be wired into any of the debates or sessions, so it kind of hangs in the open. And uh, in other fora, like ICANN, for example, it has a specific purpose. You are addressing the board directly, for example. Uh, but here it seems like a slot for uh, any other business but addressed to no one in particular, like, uh, like uh, open speaker's box. So I would like to hear uh, briefly your thoughts, Changitai, perhaps uh, based on uh, previous IGF experiences and Thomas. Um, how do you see it at the forthcoming IGF and also thoughts uh, uh, by the other MAC members that would like to share it? Can we make this lot more meaningful? And if we can, can it be longer perhaps uh, or held a couple of times a week? Or if not, then should we drop it and, uh, and, uh, and have more time for other mean more meaningful uh, uh, content? Thank you. Thank you, Slobodan. Good, good comments. I think Chengatai wanted to come in on the previous um, question as well. No, I just wanted to comment um, on what Sister Gun was asking. That yes, I mean we are trying our best to get as higher level presentation uh, representation at the IGF, and, and I think this year we can succeed. But of course, we we cannot confirm anything until. Um, Invitations are sent out and the um, replies are received. For the um, and also uh, just to, to um, just to add on to what Thomas is saying, um, the other side of the mind as well. <laughs> yes, I mean th this high-level segment is not just for governments per se. We, I mean we're going to try and make it as multi-stakeholder as possible. So. And we have been talking to other people. I mean, we've been talking to ICC basis as well to see whom they can bring from their side. So we are co collaborating with other people. Um, and for the, uh, I mean, the rules of the uh, main sessions, I, I, I think they speak for themselves. And we are going to try and see how close we can keep to them. I mean, we're not going to do something completely different. Uh, but this is slightly different. It's not completely you know, different out of the water. Um, <clears throat> for the open mic session, sorry, I have to 
I, I have to um, slow down a little bit. Um, for the uh, open mic session, we've had mixed experience with the open mic session. Some years it's you know it's been very well attended, and other years it hasn't been well attended. I think I think it was in the uh, Istanbul session it wasn't well attended, and then we reduced the time, and then everybody had something to say in the next time round. So uh, uh, we have to think about how we can advertise that and um, see how we can change it to make sure that uh, we keep the attendance up. Um, but yes, I mean. We are open to any suggestions that you may have as well, um, so we'll keep it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Changatai. Lee, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon to everybody. Lee Hibbard from the Council of Europe. Um, uh, first of all, thank you to the Swiss, Swiss authorities, of course. I think I, I would defer to them in terms of um, making it as multi-stakeholder as possible. After working with Thomas and with Jorge and others for so long, over so many years, in so many events which have to be multi-stakeholder and dynamic and not monologues but dialogues, I think uh, we're in good hands and I think that, that will be, we will optimize that this year. Um, I think, uh, yes, I think this is a, th this way forward that's been proposed is very good. Um, it's smart in the sense that clearly that, in my opinion, there are two types of VIP, those who want to push information and those who are willing to have a dialogue. Some are more comfortable in pushing information, some are comfortable in just in, in in, in speaking more broadly and more openly about issues which they may or may not be covering in their, in their respective organizations. That needs to be taken into account, and that should be taken into account in terms of who may be in the opening ceremony, who can then otherwise sit in a, in a more free, open environment discussing with open mic or not. Uh, that needs to be thought about. Of course, that must be thought about. Um, uh, yes, there's a need for VIPs, as many as possible, or very uh, good, uh, very important ones for the community. Uh, only last week in Tallinn and Eurodig, uh, when we talk about the success, people always refer to, oh yes, there was the two heads of state and there, were, there was a prime minister and there were ministers. Of course, it's not just those people. There were 650 registrations. But clearly, these are indicators of success. So I think we need VIPs. We, 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 that's the inescapable. But I think the point which can change or which can even make further progress this year through the Swiss authorities is what Thomas has said uh, a little bit earlier on, which is the word listen. Uh, I think the word listen is really, really important in the sense that uh, if in some way uh, these sessions can also be a way to uh, present information uh, visually or otherwise of the scope and the depth of the discussions, of the scope and depth of the NRIs, which I mentioned in the open consultation day, if that can be presented to VIPs in some way, then they take something back with them, and that's something which you know is, I think is, a, is an important shift in trying to make them see just how important multi-stakeholder multi dialogue has grown over over the ten years and where it's going for the next ten years. Um, so, some sort of visualization, some sort of information pushed back to the VIPs is, is very interesting. Um, as well, in terms of uh, VIPs coming to these sessions, uh, and I think I'm sure the Swiss authorities can do that, guidance to them is key in terms of how they're, be, how they're briefed. So maybe targeted questions which really underline what they do in their, for their, you know, in their organizations, really trying to be smart in what they address rather than just giving them a free hand and get, making a speech or having just let, letting them do their own uh, briefings and preparation. And that would be key too. Um, and I think on top of that, um, we talk about the opening ceremony in the first two days, but I mean, well, what about the end? I mean, this is a four-day event or five-day event, uh, you know, to keep the momentum up and the numbers up. Isn't it interesting to think about something a bit later on in the program, uh, maybe in the morning of the last day, to keep up the momentum at the level of VIPs? Do they all have to be crammed in at the beginning? Uh, what about towards the end? And also, if you are going to deal with um, these people, uh, you need, if you're going to moderate and have a dynamic discussion, you need a VIP moderator. That really is important to get to, to, to uh, what's the word, to ensure that there's respect between the panelists and the moderator. Uh, that's key in terms of the smart approach I think this is trying to achieve, this, this, these are sessions. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thomas, is there anything you want to comment? Yeah. Um, no, nothing particular, but of course you're right, and this is what we are <clears throat> also trying to get out of this, that when approaching uh, high-level people, it's good to give them a context 
of the discussion of the issues and as we encourage them not to or we try to avoid them giving speeches we would need to frame it in the invitation or in the personalized <clears throat> contacts that we we have frame it in a way that it actually fits their expertise their interest and that it then the whole ensemble or the different ensembles create like something that works together and, and enables a dialogue so so, so yeah that I, I agree with Lee's point thank you uh, thank you, Thomas. Raphael, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Very briefly, for the, for the sake of time, uh, I just want to echo Lee's uh, recent words. And pondering the, the explanations received, uh, I find the, the innovative approach outlined by Thomas and Jorge. Thank you for that. It's pretty seducing in terms of uh, achieving the primary goal of uh, having a true dialogue from the very beginning of the forum, promoting interaction and discussion. Hence, uh, I support this proposal from the, from the host country with hope that it will contribute to, to improve the IGF. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. Jack, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I, first of all, hugely appreciate the commitment and hard work in putting, that's been put into thinking through the format, the purpose, and so on of this session. Um, and also the clarification that you've made in that this is a main session with high-level speakers. It's not that it is a specifically distinct session. Um, I think that um, I think that, that clarity is, is critical. I very much support Flavio's comments earlier um, that the consideration is being made in the same process as all other main sessions in terms of criteria, discussions, and so forth. Um, and for all main sessions to be placed on a table for discussion at the same moment, otherwise it's quite difficult to make um, to consider them as a whole for the six slots, um, sort of not making assumptions that one slot is already taken. Um, as mentioned earlier, I think also that this may set a risky precedent while acknowledging the importance of making efforts to raise visibility of the discussions at the IGF. Um, it is also important to balance this against creating something which may put the open participatory principle of IGF a little at risk. Um, and I also think that it's critical for it not to be named as a high-level main session, um, that all, and to, in a way to also um, recognize that all main sessions strive to bring speakers who hold high decision-making positions, um, as well as different influencing power and stakes in the conversation, which is one of the value of IGF as well, um, in terms of being able to facilitate discussions with different stakeholder groups, differently positioned, who have equal, albeit different stakes in an internet policy discussion issue. Um, it's, not that I don't, it's not that I disagree with the idea behind this. I think it's a really fantastic one, but really just sort of raising questions around process. Um, and I think that we are still definitely able to create a main session with high level visibility and participation and ensure still a lot of open participation from the floor, especially with strong moderation, as Lee raised earlier. This has been done before. But yeah, I just kind of want to take us maybe a little bit um, questioning a little bit about what we're doing in terms of process. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Renata, you have the floor. Yes, I would just uh, note my support again and uh, just um, we ha have always been talking about doing innovative uh, sessions and trying more interactive formats. When this is suddenly on the table, we are uh, jumping at scared at this opportunity. So I would rather not see that. Thank you, Renata. Anya? Thank you. Yes, I'm just going to read a, a, a support and endorsement from Israel, from the online participants for the host country's proposal. Also support uh, from Alejandra, uh, in line with the comment that she thinks that the high-level meeting has to respect the regional and, developed and developing countries' balance. Ginger supports also the and supports sorry the Flavio's latest comment, and I believe Avri will uh, say her comment in person now. Thank you, Avri. You have the floor. Uh, at first, I wasn't planning to speak because I thought this was a foregone conclusion and so was sort of afraid that my comments would be irrelevant. In my experience, most people skip the high-level stuff. They recognize it as an incentive to get luminaries to attend, not something that's necessarily edifying. And 
if it is high level, how do we get those people to participate? Or is there really a need for the low level to participate? I'm also sure that I understand how it is something new. It seems to be going back to an older way of doing things. It was spoken of as just another session in the main room. I do not understand this. Perhaps I obviously don't know how high-level persons think, but doesn't it need to be heralded as high-level and special in order for them to be comfortable attending? I Finally, I agree with the discomfort with this idea that has been already spoken of and agree with Flavio's comment. Thank you. Thank you, Aubrey. Let me turn to Thomas. I can't tell if he wants to comment or... Thank you. I hope um, I understood what I read uh, uh, correctly and <clears throat> trying to respond um, to, to, to uh, various concern express, uh, concerns expressed by, by different people. Again, we can just continue like we did and keep complaining that the IGF does not have enough outreach and does not have political weight. Um, listen to the voices or the discussions in New York uh, where people say, well, the IGF is a civil society talk shop and things like that. Um, <clears throat> or we try new things which are not fundamentally different from other things that have been tried before. Ivy is right. Yes, but times change and, and sometimes similar things work at a later stage uh, if you do it slightly differently. And, and yes, uh, Avery, sometimes People that consider themselves are considered by others high level uh, need to have something that is titled high level because otherwise they cannot come or will, will not come and <clears throat> then it's up to the uh, to us uh, normal uh, mortable uh, people to to think about whether we we uh, want to be with them or listen to them or talk to them and what what the thing that we are in trying to ensure you will do all the best that you will not just have to listen to them that you actually b will have the chance to talk to them um, but again um, at some point in time we need to we need to take a decision uh, do we go for something slightly different or do we not and then it will be uh, the same like what we had and we'll have the same discussions we'll have the same criticisms we'll have the same opinions I would uh, just like to invite you to, yeah, this is an experiment. We need to keep experimenting with the formats, with in particular the, from what I perceived, uh, need, and that also came out, I think, of, of last year's uh, retreat in, in, in uh, close to, to New York. We need to make the IGF politically relevant. We want to make it politically relevant for a number of reasons, uh, and and um, yeah, this is our offer, as uh, Jorge has said. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. I have Sala in the queue, Elizabeth and G. Sala, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first, I'd like to just offer comments in relation to uh, the nature of the Internet. Uh, in, uh, the evolution of the Internet would not be possible without change, risk, and the ability to unlearn, relearn, learn, and innovate. And for those who are involved in it, their relevance is determined by the capacity to learn from the past, look to the future, to improve IGF processes, or for those within private sector, public sector, civil society. And especially for us in the MEG, we have a unique uh, opportunity offered to us. And it also means that at some, uh, to some extent we have to ask ourselves whether we're willing to embrace change to working modalities to make room for much needed innovation. To not adjust and change is to place a ceiling on the capacity for the IGF to improve. In terms of the mandate that the UN Secretary General had commissioned the MEG, in terms of roping the Addis Ababa Action Agenda, there have been levels of criticisms offered against the MEG and offered against the IGF uh, in terms of meeting those targets. 
pertaining to funding and financing aspects of infrastructure institutions and agencies, as was uh, slightly alluded to by the chair, but she didn't mention the Addis Ababa Action Agenda. This is, but I'm mentioning it. Now, members of the UN Second Committee, whether we like it or not, are high level. And whilst they have set up a committee wherein members include financial institutions like the World Bank, Asia Development Bank, the equivalent from Africa and the other parts of the, of the globe, we as a MAG and even as the IGF Secretariat or as the IGF community have zero input into the conversation. And, and not too long ago, two months ago, we had the issue of being under budgeted by 200,000. So operationally, this is just a, a matter of practicality. So with that, I would support that we need to be politically relevant. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Sala. Um, Jorge had asked for a, do you want to do it later, Jorge? Okay. Um, so I have Elizabeth in the queue. Thank you very much. Um, so I, 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 I've really been listening and, and um, I, I, I hear the different perspectives very strongly and I, I have quite a lot of sympathy for, um, and, and, and I, I thought Jack put a lot of the um, uh, concerns and considerations uh, very well in her intervention. I also have to say that from a very pragmatic point of view, um, we face this challenge all the time. Uh, everyone wants us to deliver a CEO to a meeting and they feel that without the CEO at the meeting, the meeting will not be perceived as um, sufficiently important in the agenda of the issues that they're talking about and that it will, it, they will have difficulty getting sort of funding and attention and, 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 and that, that kind of um, engagement. So I do, I, I do really, um, appreciate and understand those arguments, both from high-level business folks as well as um, government folks. At the same time, I'm wondering if there isn't a way in which we can reorder the high-level thematic session in order to make that distinction between what is the host country led and coordinated activity so that it resists a little bit of the temptation or the concerns that we're hearing about you know, uh, which is which and, and, and how does that work? So maybe we don't have to choose between one and the other, but we can actually have both. I realize there are probably some pragmatic and protocol issues, but perhaps we could be creative having a, a sort of minister level session, uh, minister roundtable, high level roundtable ahead of the opening ceremony instead of a thematic main session on day two, which would then again give this perception that we this is different than before, but organized in a way that still keeps people comfortable with which part is actually the, um, the program and not. So I, I put that out for consideration and, um, and, and remain happy to work with um, the host country and the secretariat on uh, appealing to high level folks for these sessions. Thank you, Elizabeth. G, you have the floor. Madam Chair, um, I very much respect the proposal made by our host, uh, Switzerland, and I do think that uh, our ministers, should they come, they should know that uh, the, er the era of reading prepared text is forever gone, and they should learn to uh, participate in interactive discussions. But in the meantime, we should let them feel that they are uh, respected. They still enjoy the sense of privilege and, and be a dig as be a dignitary. And uh, um, to make sure that uh, such interactive discussion uh, produce expected results, we have to make sure that uh, um, uh, simultaneous interpretation uh, is of high quality, because as we are. Uh, having uh, in 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 the United Nations, uh, most of the time, uh, the simultaneous interpretation, particularly interpretation be between Chinese and English, uh, the quality is really lousy. Um, you know, sometimes it's it's totally un understand. It cannot be understood at all. 
and uh, sometimes their English is much worse than mine even. You can imagine um, how lousy it could be. So um, that's uh, my, uh, my impression. Um, and uh, about the timing um, uh, arrangements of the, the, these sessions, why don't we uh, arrange the uh, opening ceremony on Sunday so that you know all the high profile you know you know colorful things on a in, in, on in, in to be done you know one day and after that they have a, a wonderful dinner and it's a day of leisure happiness why should we uh, intertwine the opening session with all these business, uh, main sessions and I, I I just don't understand it uh, our minister can come one day earlier I think she uh, thank you um, and I actually think your English is very, very good. Thank you. I think Thomas wants to come in on that. Thank you, and I'll ask Jorge to, <clears throat> to compliment me. Um, I think the, the uh, question that, that uh, Haizun uh, asked is to some extent the answer to the question that uh, uh, Ginger and others are asking in the, in the, in the <clears throat> in the chat that uh, unfortunately I don't have on my computer, but uh, Lynn is sometimes showing me uh, to keep me informed. Um, what is different is that we are not trying to have a completely detached, completely in the hands of the host country uh, with no, let's say, formal accountability or responsibility to the rest of the IGF zero day high level discussion. This is not what we as Swiss government are looking for because we do not necessarily think that this is what in view of high level people should be what they remember or what they experience from the IGF. We want to bring them in into the IGF. And as I said, not just uh, uh, build bridges uh, uh, horizontally but also vertically and break these silos there. This is, again, not so easily done, and we have heard, uh, had several attempts uh, in, in the past, so this is nothing new um, per se. But the, maybe the new element is that we are trying to bring them closer from that we're trying to move away from a separate and definitely try to move away from a monologue series of monologues. That's point one, and we've had that all the past years. So it would be new if we didn't have that, at least for the, as far as I can remember back. We always had a, a series of monologue that, that most of the people were not really following, apart from those that, that um, have a reason. Um, so that is new. Uh, the other element is that we are actually trying to, we can, uh, let me try and put it in, 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 in simple terms. We try to get the VIPs used that they should move towards being participants in normal main sessions, workshops like everybody else. This is what, what uh, for instance, we do in, on the Swiss IGF. We have parliamentarians and others that participate in a normal discussion because we don't have any panels, so we can't put them on the panel. Uh, in Eurodic as well, we have some ministers that participate in normal discussions. Uh, and I think this is the spirit that we are trying to, to promote, that uh, we're all participating on equal footing, no matter what the stakeholder, uh, uh, where, which stakeholder you come from, and also no matter what hierarchical level you come from. But of course, you need to take people, people there. So the idea to basically have something that is between a normal main session and the ordinary, what they know from elsewhere, VIP session, is we are trying to like somehow uh, give some water to the plants that grow in this gray zone. Uh, that's I hope it, that I'm expressing myself in an understandable way, and 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 this is also not revolutionary new, but I think we we are maybe more committed to trying this than 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 uh, in previous years. Uh, maybe Jorge uh, make my words more clear in case it's sometimes good that two two people are trying to convey the same idea for people to understand. Thank you, Jorge. Thank you, Thomas. And uh, uh, thank you for, for all the, the comments. Uh, really what, what we are trying to do is to tackle 
um, one of the gaps or one of the shortcomings that have been identified and which we are very well aware in the MAC, in the wider IGF community, and this is to, to attract also very high level people from the business sector and from the political sector. And uh, I think we, we agree on that. So this is a tool to, to cover that gap. And we are really talking about the Tuesday morning, about three hours. So uh, I think we, we have to focus on that because the Monday afternoon would be there in any case. The only alternative is a sequence of speeches. So I think we have to focus on the fact that we are talking about Tuesday morning, three hours, and um, we have to, we are asking for your trust that we are able to bridge uh, the, the difference between the purely uh, Mac way of doing things and the zero-day, uh, top-down way of doing things. Um, we have circulated what would be probably the basis for, for this uh, session of Tuesday morning to the MAC. It has been endorsed by some MAC members. I don't think that there has been any opposition to, to this proposal. And it uh, aligns, of course, with uh, the main session guidelines. That, that's how we've been doing things. Different thing is that in order to make this possible, we also need some flexibilities. We need also to, to have some degree of uh, freedom uh, when uh, shaping this session. So. Um, we would try our utmost best to to keep uh, with the spirit of the main session guidelines for these three hours. We would uh, uh, do our best to keep it as uh, stakeholder diverse as possible, as is in our proposal. And um, I think it's a, a very limited risk and so we, we shouldn't have, uh, we shouldn't be fearful uh, for this little uh, uh, gap we have to jump uh, upon because it's, uh, uh, I think it's very much aligned with, with how main sessions are working normally. But we need this uh, extra level of flexibility if we really want to be operational and be able to attract ministers, uh, CEOs from companies. And if we attract them to, to this high-level session or high-level main session, it, it, is, it becomes more probable that w and they will stay for the other main sessions or will get uh, uh, and attract uh, other VIPs who will want to have bilaterals with them, etc., etc. So we are just asking for a bit, a little bit of trust. And I, just the, the last point, uh, I don't remember if Thomas uh, responded to Segun uh, when he asked about our prime minister, our president. Well, in, in Switzerland, we don't have prime minister. We have. Uh, federal councillors, which are our ministers, but we are uh, uh, planning very strongly to have our president here, which is our minister. So that's our offer. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge, and thank you very much for the very clear ask. Thomas? Thank you all. As announced earlier, um, I have uh, actually to go to Bern, but right now uh, I get calls because I have to chair the uh, GAC leadership call, uh, which is the last one in preparation before the Johannesburg meeting. I already get, get the phone call, so uh, Jorge will be <laughs> our, our uh, uh, main brain uh, for, for this afternoon, and, and of course I will be uh, eager to, to uh, follow up and, and get, get informed. And uh, thank you again for, for this very constructive spirit this is a very challenging but also highly interesting 
thing that we are building here. So, um, yeah, thank you very much and see you or hear you at the next call. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Thomas. I have three speakers left in the queue, Peter Major, Christine, and Jack, and then we'll try and figure out where we can leave this discussion um, and come back after lunch. So, Peter, you have the floor. <coughs> Thank you, Lynn. Uh, before Ambassador Schneider leaves, I just want to give the support on behalf of the uh, CSTD and uh, just remembering, uh, I have chaired the, the working group on, on the improvements to the Internet Governance Forum, and uh, probably we, we could find some of the recommendations which uh, this initiative is uh, being supported by. But I, I am absolutely convinced that the spirit of the, of the working group and the outcome document of the working group is in, along this line. So uh, I, I fully support. Well, as we know, the devil is in the details. Uh, probably we, we could rely on the Swiss diplomacy for the moderation of the obsession, which is extremely important to, to uh, alleviate all the difficulties uh, between being high level, but also being involved in the community. So once again, full support. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Peter. Christine, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'm, um, I would also um, I would also like to speak in support um, of uh, the proposal from our host. Um, I think I think uh, from a government perspective, since I'm representing uh, a government stakeholder, a previous host, I I, I think. Uh, this is a step towards integrating governments into the program more strongly. Having it within the program and not separate outside in a, in a zero day or before is definitely a step towards having a high level, whether government also or also from other stakeholder groups, uh, be more integrated into further sessions of the program, which is an, uh, actually something that we aim at. So I really liked what Thomas said, that we just don't want them in one session. We really want everyone to be included and integrated in all the different sessions, work through our modalities of workshops and main sessions. So this is definitely a step forward. It is um, innovation towards that. It, I think it, it, uh, it is something that the retreat also we discussed uh, when we were in New York about how, how we can be innovative to, to attract government. So, so really, I do speak in favor of that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christine. Uh, Jacques, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm thinking a lot, actually, um, because I really appreciate that the, the kind of um, uh, greater clarification around the intention, the kind of like transition um, that this is intended to do, uh, moving the zero day into, um, into the main program. It doesn't entirely respond to or alleviate all of my concerns around spaces, um, but I really very much appreciate the kind of uh, motivation and um, longer term objective behind it. I guess there's a couple of things around kind of transition processes which is um, sometimes from year to year because MAC members also change, conversations maybe it's not always brought from year to year. So something that's meant to be transitionary could end up being set in stone. Um, I guess that's one thing that I'm kind of wondering. Um, and then the second thing is, I, you know, coming as a civil society rep, I also noticed quite acutely that civil society is excluded from any assumption of high level. So who is high level in civil society, I suppose? Um, no, like, yeah, we have no CEOs, yeah? <laughs> um, so that's, uh, I, I guess that's just something to like, okay. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, I think one of the, just, just as a reminder that one of the value of IGF and why there is also quite high level of commitment and investment by civil society in this space is precisely the multi-stakeholder, um, different, albeit relatively kind of, um, fairly open compared to a lot of other UN processes to speak to decision makers in a very frank and open way um, where we don't have to have, you know, a big layer of cake between us. Um, and, and I think that value also shouldn't be compromised as we're thinking about this very, very important and pragmatic thing about visibility, about engaging more um, high level participation and so forth. So I just also want to put that on the table, that it's important um, and it, that it's absolutely not a question of trust. Um, I think no doubt there is a lot of trust, um, but it's, a, it's really a question about process and participation. And maybe that's also a moment then to think about how then can we um, think through 
the maybe the thinking of the of the formation of development of the of this session um, also through that lens. Um, and lastly, um, I I I sort of pick you know like when Elizabeth was giving kind of um, her her suggestion on um, and it like different ways of thinking through this session to try and deal with all the different tensions. Um, I, I, I would love to explore that, I think, like, you know, a transition type of session for a transition type of process or intention. Thank, thank you, Jack. Um, let me see if I can kind of underline where we are. And I know we're um, into the lunch hour, so I will be short on this. Um, I mean, it's probably pretty clear that I actually like the idea and I'm supportive of the idea. Nevertheless, in my role as chair, I tried to listen really carefully and note where there was support and um, all the considerations. Um, I mean, I think there was strong support across a um, uh, number of the stakeholder groups. I think civil society was um, both some in support and some not in support in terms of the MAG representation here. Um, I think in, in this instance, um, I would try and draw the consensus um, under the fact that we um, support the Swiss government going forward with that proposal, that we make sure that they come back to the MAG regularly and share the developments, um, and can the MAG can help sort of steer that um, appropriately. If nothing else, um, everybody will be aware of both the rationale for what is being done and some of the concerns and the opportunity. The Swiss have proven themselves to be so, so open, certainly the opportunity to to influence that as well. My understanding is that the Swiss government fully meant to include civil society in the high level um, as well, that there is, is absolutely no exclusion um, there. You don't need a title of CEO or anything else to your, to your point, Jack, to do that. I also know that Thomas had said um, that the Swiss government would be willing to help identify additional high-level speakers, whether from private sector or government, to participate in the workshop proposals as well as other main sessions. So they, they really are serious about integrating government, um, particularly, or high-level um, people in particular, across the IGF. Um, so I would suggest that as we go through the workshop proposals and as we go through the main sessions, um, that we all really keep that in mind and take them up on that. Um, I think they have access that most of us don't have in our day-to-day -day job and that they're actually making available to us. So I think we can have as a sub-goal. And, you know, my things become cast in stone usually if there's some success. And I would hope in a multi-stakeholder model they only become cast in stone <clears throat> if there's actually some success and it's well supported by the broad community. So I, I do hope um, we can leave that there, come back after lunch. We will need to figure out where we're going with respect to the rest of the main session discussions of the workshop proposal section because we are getting somewhat pressed for time. Um, G, I'll, I'll give you the floor. I'm recognizing that you are between us and lunch. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, I will be very brief. Just want to put on record that uh, uh, I have no objection to participation of NGOs in the high-level session, um, but uh, we have to make sure that uh, no controversy, particularly political controversy or disputes, arise from uh, participation of NGOs uh, in the high-level section. Um, so uh, to, to make sure that that doesn't happen, um, MAG members do need to have a say in which uh, what type of NGOs should, should have such an opportunity. Uh, we have to quarantine this. Thank you. This session in particular is under the Swiss government. Um, it wouldn't be the MAG to rule or, or overrule their speakers. Um, I, I see a lot of flags starting to go up in the room. Um, is it really necessary that we respond further to this point? If so, I have Aida, Juan, <laughs> Rasha. Aida? I have if just a quick question just that maybe a colleague from China can answer face to face. What constitutes the contract? You're not on the mic. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? All right. So uh, this is just a question. Maybe you decide to leave it in the air. But what constitutes a controversy, and why do we um, connect it to only civil society? Uh, that is supposed to bring it to the table when it comes to high level or whatever you want level. Thank you. No, I, I, I do agree, in fact, that it wasn't appropriate to 
probably make the comment, but then certainly to tie it to a, to a stakeholder. Juan and then Rasha. Okay, now, uh, I totally agree with G, and if I have mentioned that concern very strongly for day zero, and you said that in day zero, when it's some strong objection that even day zero is not part of the UN program, uh, there's some way of, of channeling that. But definitely, if this is in day one, really we have to, uh, to, to check that. There are rules, and I don't know if it is aware, uh, aware of that. There are rules for the participation of NGOs in UN events. In the case, in general sense, uh, AIDA is those that have been uh, ECOSOC accredited. In the case of this information society related events, there's a bit broader accreditation for NGOs. I think that we should stick to that and not to leap because uh, I, I can answer you uh, offline, I think it will be better, but there have been cases of really uh, bad situations that are embarrassing, mainly to the host country. Uh, it's embarrassing. And I think that we as MAG, remember we are the wedding planners, we are responsible for the whole wedding and we have to check that the, for instance, that the uh, musician doesn't sing a song that it could attack the sensitivities maybe of the grandfather or the religion of the grandmother. We have to take all those details when we are organizing the wedding, not to leave it, you know, just open like that and sing what you want to sing. So I think that this is our responsibility and really we have to look carefully and, uh, and to which kind of participation from, uh, is there. There are rules, Chair, you know that there are rules, and those rules have to be kept to the line here. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. I think Chengatai, oh. you want to come in? Uh, thank you very much, Juan. Um, yes, uh, we've dealt with similar um, issues um, over the past um, IGFs, and I think uh, with the Swiss, I think, um, I mean, they'll make the right decisions, and I think it will, but we, we, we will keep it in mind. Yes, thank you. Okay, just briefly, I have Aida, Rasha, and G, and then we will definitively close the queue. So, okay. Aida? Okay, just a brief answer. Thank you for the reminder. I was aware of that, and also sometimes both bride and groom make some embarrassments, but, like, who are we to judge? Thank you. I'm actually, as a member of civic society, I'm, I'm starting to get offended by by the uh, by the comments made. I, I think this basically amounts to censorship. Uh, I'm, I'm not certainly not arguing for any uh, participant or any organization to go uh, outside of the rules or, or speak where they're not be allowed to speak. But I don't think we have the right to determine um, what is controversial or not, or who is to say what. I think in the spirit of openness and inclusiveness, uh, we are really not wedding planners. I don't care if somebody gets embarrassed. We should be, um, we should be working for the greater good of, uh, of the communities that we represent, not, uh, not, uh, not aiming to make things look good, but aiming to actually do good. Thank you. Thank you, Rasha. Chengatai wanted to come back in, and then we'll go to G oh, no. and Jack. I'm sorry, because I hadn't seen your flag. No, I just wanted to add, yes, I mean, we, we do have the rules of conduct for the IGF meeting, and uh, we do explain those to the participants, and I think in almost all the cases, people have a a adhered to it. So, but, you know. Okay. Um, why um, I insist on exercising this right of censorship, and... Uh, I think we have this right, and I will not apologize for this due right. Um, why we should exercise this quarantine or censorship is that there are certain groups which have liaison with certain extremist or terrorist groups which support terror-like rebel groups or rebel-like terror groups, uh, which have, uh, 
whatever you know wherever this uh, uh, you know the, this uh, would wherever this terrorist group locates um, should su such kind of NGO comes to the UN forum we'll be highly concerned and we should make sure that such things doesn't happen thank you I have full trust in the Swiss authorities in the UN and a track record of 11 years of managing this quite successfully I'll give the last word to Jack and then we'll go to lunch thank you very much I'm really trying quite hard to contain my rage actually um, so thanks for the reminder about the rules of conduct. Also, it is a UN health space and there are also very specific rules around um, terms of engagement and whether or not you can directly um, address particular issues by a host government and so forth. So I think we can trust in some of these processes. Um, but if we start to think about having just creating spaces and criteria for good and bad civil society actors, good and bad NGOs, then are we also going to do that for governments and private sector? Do we also give spaces for good and bad governments, good and bad private sector who's violating human rights at different levels? I think this is a terrible precedent to um, start staging. So I would leave it at that. I think it is... Um, I appreciate the concern, I appreciate that there has been some issues before, and I appreciate also the work of the MAG and the Secretariat in addressing them, but I really think that this is not a good tone to set about this conversation. Are better done offline, one-to-one. Um, -one. I really would like to stop here. We have a full afternoon ahead of us. This is already cutting into other meetings. I, I understand there's a working group on communications and outreach, which is meeting at 1.15 in the cafeteria. cafeteria. Um, we all need to be back here promptly at 3 so we can press on with the um, still significant work in front of us. Thank you very much.